Ready. Ready to open court. Welcome all. 36th District Court, State of Michigan is now in session with the Honorable Judge Shannon A. Holmes presiding. During the Zoom court proceeding, there will be no gum chewing, eating, drinking, smoking, or talking. Also, you're required to be dressed appropriately for court. No do-rags, hats, pajamas, low-cut tops, spaghetti string tops, or underclothes should be visible. If you have any additional electronic devices, please silence them or turn them off now. Thank you all in advance for your compliance, and good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, and good morning, everyone. Good morning, Judge. All right. Mr. Reed, Mr. Feigens, the staff, good to see you all. Good morning, Ms. Wilson. Good morning. I all right. I am ready to proceed. I'll start first with the attorneys placing their appearance on the record. And for those who are in the virtual courtroom, I am going to mute your phone. Please do not unmute yourself. I will ask you to unmute when I am ready for you. Thank you so much. Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens. Yes, thank you, Judge. Good morning. For the record, Jesse Reed, Drug Court Defense Attorney, P23863. Uh, Judge, I'd like to make a motion, a continuing motion, that my appearance be for all my clients this morning. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Good morning to you, and your motion is granted. Mr. Fikens. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Robert Fikens, P31894, and I would make a similar motion. All right. Good morning to you, Mr. Fikens, and your motion is granted as well. I'm ready to start the docket. Officer, first case. First, Your Honor, is Dominic Walters. All right. Ms. Walters, if you could unmute your phone for me, make sure you're visible in the camera. Good morning. I, good morning. State your name for the record. Dominique Walters. And Ms. Walters, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your, your hearing today by way of Zoom? Yes. Wonderful. I have the following matter. Case number 19046533301. Ms. Walters, how are you this morning? Um, I'm doing well. Besides my son being sick, I'm doing well. All right. I hope that your son gets better. I'm sure you're taking good care of him, right? I'm trying my best. Thank you. All right. Very good. And so, Miss Walters, Happy New Year's to you. Happy New Year's and Merry Christmas. I hope you. I hope you enjoy it. Thank your you. I did. It was nice and quiet. What about yours? Um. Well, to be honest, it was my first New Year's being sober in a long time. So I thought so my eyes were open to a whole different world. I've seen a lot of different stuff. You actually saw a real new year through sober eyes, right? Yes. Very good. Congratulations to you. You see everybody cheering you on. I see thumbs up, applause. Yeah, we are very, very proud of you. How difficult was that for you, if it was difficult at all? Um, the only difficult part about it was not being able to really like attend like any celebrations because everybody was smoking and drinking and I didn't want to be around it. So I ended up just going to get my baby and going back home. There you go. But you did the right thing. You did the right thing. All right. You've been testing like you should. Yes, ma'am. All right. What about outpatient treatment? Tell me what's going on. Are you going? Yes. Who's your counselor? Are you a therapist? Ms. Hawthorne. All right. Is that at Detroit Recovery Project? Yes. All right. What do you think of Ms. Hawthorne so far? Good relationship? Good work? Yes, I absolutely enjoy her. She's very honest and raw, and she can relate to certain situations. So I, I enjoy that. And she shares, too. So that makes it better. Very good. I'm so glad to hear that it makes it better for you. All right, Ms. Walters. And so you're, you said your son is sick. I hope, I know you're taking good care of him. And is there anything you need us to help you with? Um, no, not really. No, I'm, I'm, I'm All right. Well. You're doing well. Very good. Did you set some goals for yourself in 2021? Um, yes. Um, to, to get better friends because 
like going through this program and situation is it's showing me like who's really there for you and who really cares like just to get um a better group of people to hang around better support system um to get my license together and to purchase a home like i'm i want to be a homeowner like i live in an apartment now like i'm i'm over it all right very good and so those are some wonderful goals get some better friends get your license taken care of and to become a homeowner. And now that you're sober, you're not using any substances, you should be able to work on that, right? Yes. Very good. All right, it's good to see you. You look good. I'm glad you made it to the new year in the midst of all of this craziness that's been going on. I still believe it's going to be a good year. How about that? I, I agree. All right. Very good. Miss Ross, is there anything else you want me to know about Miss Walter? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Walter, Ms. Walter's doing really well. She has, um, she's do I received a um, progress report from Miss Hawthorne uh, indicating that she's participating well. Um, she's fully engaged in her therapy session uh, and her group participation. She has uh, 17 AA meetings. And um, overall, she's doing well. All right, very good. Miss Walters, tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. Um, well, I learned that it's an everyday process that um, you're not alone. Um, I've also learned that with being um, having an addictive behavior to not even having alcohol or drugs, like it can be also in positive ways too. Like um, you can be addicted to eating healthy like there's different ways to you know you can change your addiction um i've also been learning about how drugs really have a long-term effect on you like even if you stop using them like it can still affect you mentally or your health or the people around you i didn't see how much that it can affect the people that's surrounding you as much absolutely those are some good lessons to learn very early on all right mr reed mr Fiken. Oh, yes, Judge. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Walters. You have a good report today. Uh, keep up the good work. We are proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. Uh, be safe and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Your Honor, if I might add, Ms. Walters, Ms. Walters, what great testimony you gave today. That's wonderful how you perceive yourself, how you perceive your progress, how you perceive this program. We are so proud of you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. All right, Ms. Walters, you are going to come back to see me in two weeks. And so, Ms. Robs, that's going to be on the 21st of January. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. How am I looking on the 21st? Okay, the 21st. Um... All right, very good. So Ms. Walters will have January 21st, 2021 at 8.30 a.m. All right, Ms. Walters, I want you to keep up the great work. Okay, thank you. Um, I, can I say one more thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, when will I be able to get this bracelet off? It is so expensive and I miss taking baths. <laughs> Now, you know we streaming live. Don't tell people you're not taking baths because we're going to talk about you when it. you no, get off I the screen. No, I am showering. I can't take a, I can't <laughs> take a bath. <laughs> All right, Ms. Robs, let me hear from you. We, we had Ms. Walters on the alcohol tether because we were having some issues. The reality of it is, Ms. Ms. Walters and Ms. Robs, is that the alcohol tether can't change your way of thinking. The only thing that could change your way of thinking is that you do something. You take in the information and the knowledge that you're getting and you do something with it. And so how long has she been on that alcohol tether? Uh, your Honor, she's been on an alcohol tether for um, approximately two months. Um, she's been doing really well on the tether. Uh, no issues since her last obstruction she's been testing consistently her tests have been negative 
Um, she's been doing really well. She checks in with me every Wednesday uh, for progress updates. Um, Your Honor, if, if I may uh, make the recommendation for the removal of the tether, uh, because she, she is, she's really, really doing well and then really engaging in her sobriety at this time. All right, right. wonderful. Yes, Can Mr. Feinkin. Well, given her her thoughts today and her statements today, Your Honor, I would certainly make a motion to remove that tether. All right, if there is no objection from anyone uh, else on the team, no objection, Judge. Uh, she did an excellent job through the holidays. The holidays are over now. I, I would have no objection. Thank you, Judge. All right, wonderful. Then I am going to remove the tether, Miss Walters. Uh, Miss, don't you remove it, Miss? Let Miss Rob oh, schedule. Put that there. <laughs> All right, let Miss Rob schedule to have it uh, removed properly. And so, Miss Walters. Let's stay on this path we're on so I don't have to put you back on it, okay? No problem. All right, wonderful. Thank you for asking about the removal. And we are very, very proud of you. Okay? Thank you. I'm proud of All myself. Right. Thank you. As you should be. Yes, ma'am. All right. You made it through one of the most difficult seasons. A lot of people fall off during the Christmas vacation, New Year's, all of these celebratory things, Thanksgiving. We have a rough time once Thanksgiving hit, but you did it. You, you should tap into the fact that you're strong enough to do it. You have the willpower to do it and you should really be proud of yourself. All right. I think she's frozen. I am going to see you on the 21st. All right, okay. take care. All right, officer, who do we have up next? Thanks, Your Honor, it's Regina Cook. All right, Ms. Cook, you do not have volume. Oh, there you are, you did, you got on your audio. Uh -huh. Good morning, Ms. Good Cook, morning. say your name for the record. Good morning, my name is Regina Cook. Good morning and happy new year to you. Thank to you, Ms. Judge Holmes. All right, I have the following for Regina Cook. I have case number SP1003001 and case number Z8059391. Ms. Cook, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Judge Holmes? I'm doing well. You look good today. Look at you. Thank you. How did you bring in the new year? Aileen went to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> you slept through it? <laughs> yeah, we need to applaud that because we had some folks doing some other things. So very good, Ms. Cook. Very good. Thank All you. right. Very, very good. And so did you, have you made any resolutions, any goals that you've set? I don't like to use the word resolution because that means we won't keep it after 36 days. We'll be done with it. That's what somebody said in the news. We only keep our New Year's resolutions for 35 days. So did you set any goals for yourself in 2021? No, not really. Just the same old thing. Keep staying clean and um, keeping my head focused. Okay, staying clean and keeping focused. That's your goal. All right. That, those are still good goals. Those are still very good goals. And so yeah, did you have any difficulties over the holidays? No, I had a beautiful holiday with my grandkids and, and you know, family, just cooked and ate and, you know, just laid back and watched TV. All right. Did you go and do your testing like you were supposed to? My who? Your testing. Oh, yes. Your testing. Yes, yes. All right. Very good. Very good. And so, Miss Cook, is there anything you need us to help you with at this time? No, not at this time. I'm doing good. All right. I want you to stay on the path of doing good. I will. All right. I'm glad to hear that. Miss Robs, what do you want me to know about Miss Cook? Tell me where she is in the program at this point. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. Ebony Rob, your treatment court case manager. Uh, Ms. Cook is doing really well at this time, Your Honor. Um, she is currently in phase two. Um, she has completed all of her uh, requirements with the exception of uh, payments of her balance. She's completed the AA, uh, 100 AA meetings. She's complied with testing at ATS. She's completed the ARMS program. 
She is currently an outpatient at DRP. Her therapist is Ms. Hawthorne, who uh, I received a progress report from indicating that Ms. Cook is compliant and engaged in her therapy sessions. Um, she's previously completed DRP um, before, um, but she at this time, Your Honor, is doing well. She's, um, she's watched a sobriety video. Um, she, is, she has completed uh, the vast majority of, of all of her requirements with the, like I said, uh, the exception of her payments. Um, at this time, you're what's the balance? Do you know the balance? The balance is, I think, six. She has a balance of six. Well, we'll look, I believe she's already six something. Okay, well, Ms. Ross, let's do this instead of using this time to do it. Let's get her balance reconciled because Ms. Drew's giving me one number. It sounds like Ms. Cook is saying six something, but we need to reconcile her balance, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so go ahead, continue with your reporting. Um, once her uh, her balance is, is reconciled, Your Honor, I did want to make the recommendation for uh, Ms. Cook for phase three, as she is on track, she has followed up with her medical, um, we've received documentations for her psyche valve, she's in compliance. Um, if, if I could bring it to staff and your honor for recommendation for phase three. Okay, so you wanna, you wanna bring it to staffing at a later date for phase three, or are you recommending her for promotion today? For a later date, your honor, once her balance is All reconciled. Right. Okay, yeah, because even at six something, she's been with us um, since October of 2019. Her balance should be significantly reduced before I can even put her in phase three. Yeah, so right. you all get that together and then I'll entertain that recommendation. Until then, Ms. Cook, I need you to stay on track, okay? Well, I will, certainly will. All right, tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. Wait a minute, before you wait a minute, Miss Cook, before you do that, please do not unmute your phone. If I have muted your device, it is to remain muted because we can hear you turning pages and moving and all of those things. And I need to be able to hear the parties. So do not unmute yourself. Thank you so much. All right. I'm sorry, Miss Cook. What have you learned? Well, I learned a lot. As far as you know, going through the changes and um, staying sober, and how many people didn't get killed on drinking for the holidays and COVID nineteen, just just a lot going on right now. Just I'm just trying to stay focused and do what I have to do. All right, and so Miss Cook, are you back to work yet? No, I'm not back to work right now. Okay, so what are you doing in that line with respect to work? What's your plan? I still get unemployment right now, and I'm on um, okay. file for SSD. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, I want you to keep up to good work. You all get that balance together, and then you should be going to phase three, Miss Cook, and that's the last stretch. And as long as you stay on track, there's no reason why you should not successfully complete this program. Okay. All right. All right. All right, very good. Miss Robs, she's in phase two. That means that she would come back on the 28th of January. Is yes, that a good sure. date? All right. So she would do a face to face, but she goes on my docket for January 28th, 2021 at 8 30 a.m. And Miss Robs, you all can work out the logistics, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right, wonderful. Good to see you, Miss Cook. Take care of yourself. You too, Judge Holmes. I will. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let me All right, officer. Officer. Next, your honor, is Tony Harris. All right, Miss Harris. If you could unmute. She's not paying attention. Miss Harris. Now I've lost her video. There she is. Miss Harris, if you could unmute yourself, we're ready for your hearing. Hello. There you are. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. Good 
Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harris, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom this morning? You have a bad connection. You've got to get somewhere where you can connect, Ms. Harris. Okay, I'm going now. I had to get away from the house. All right. Do you agree to have your hearing in our virtual courtroom? Yes, ma'am. All right, wonderful. I can hear you. Ms. Harris, I have the following case for you. Cases. I have case number SP 8267781, case number U 1553914, and case number 19060326601. All right, Miss Harris, what did you do to bring in the new year? Well, I didn't do anything but watch the movie. And, um... By the time I went to bed, the guns started shooting. Oh, so I, I just stayed in the bed. Hopefully, we oh. came out all right. And it all did. right. It came out. And you were safe and you were sober. Is that correct? That's right. All right. Very good. What are your plans for 2021? Well, my plans is to. Get finished with this other probation I got on me. I got another year of probation, and hopefully, I'm going to um, continue that and continue seeing my grandbabies and just stay sober. Okay, those are all good things. Those are all good things. How's your living situation going? Real good. My sister helping me. It's real out. good. Mm -hmm. She helped You still me with out. your sister? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Are you still being a good sister? Yes, I'm still being a good sister. That's what big sisters <laughs> do. Be good sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you weren't far away. You're right about that. That's what big sisters do. All right, very, very good. Miss Harris, tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. Well, I learned that staying clean and sober is a good way of living your life and that you can accomplish things. Like I'm I'm accomplishing all my goals. I'm still looking for a building to start a, a, a resale shop. And I'm looking for okay. a place. Mm -hmm. And she got her new teeth in. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> big sister, go tell it. Miss, look at you. You, I, Miss Harris, you look beautiful. All right, big sister, she go tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Yes, she will. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I did um 105 meetings. And I'm um, still going on meetings for the um, other court, but I like the meetings. But um, Good. the other, what's that, 32nd court, circuit court? 32nd circuit court? I don't know if you have another probation. Murphy Hall of Justice, they got me going three times a week for meetings, and I'm continuing that. Okay. So, and I'm dropping clean urines. Mm -hmm. There you go. And how do you feel? Do you feel good? I feel wonderful. Yep, I gained five Look more pounds. You. Look, I gained five more pounds. I had to go give me some things. <laughs> it's okay. My cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in a good place. Keep eating. You're sober, you're clean, and you're on a path of recovery. And that's a wonderful thing. And you look good. You are so fortunate, Miss Harris. You really are. You really are. What do you need us to help you with? Well, right now, um, I just need I just need to um try to get some of my payment done. 
Like if I okay service again, that'd be fine. All right. So let me. I'll hear from your case manager. I don't have an issue because we've talked about your financial uh, position. I don't have an issue with you doing community service to reduce your fines and costs. Okay. okay. But just for everybody who's in the courtroom listening, community service to reduce fines and costs is for people who are not working. If you are working, you are expected to pay your fines and costs, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I don't have an issue with it. Let's work with your case manager on making that happen, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, wonderful. Let me hear from your case manager. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Harris is doing really well. She has completed her outpatient her community service, um, her 40 hours of community service. She's completed the 100 um, a, uh, NA meetings. Um, she has completed the arms program. Uh, she has done extremely well. She's still been working with her uh, peer recovery coach. And I am able to set her uh, uh, back up, Your Honor, with a uh, referral for community service at DRP to assist her with reducing her fees and fines. She also uh, plans on sending a payment, Your Honor, of $100, which will bring her balance down to $725. Um, because she has done so well, Your Honor, she's consistent with her testing. She hasn't missed any tests, all negative screens. Um, as a, just as an incentive, Your Honor, um, would it be possible to make a recommendation for Ms. Harris to be promoted to phase three on today? Absolutely, absolutely. Any objection to that recommendation? No objections, Judge. All right, wonderful. And so I, I'm, I'm entertaining that, that, um, that recommendation because she has worked very hard. We are very, very proud of you, Ms. Harris. And so understand that phase three is not the phase to get relaxed or to slack off in any way. You've got to continue to work because we want you in recovery for a lifetime, a lifetime. No going backwards. All right. You have the tools available to you. You don't need a court order to go to counseling. You don't need a court order to go to meetings. You don't need a court order to make sure you're in a group of people uh, that are also sober and that are supporting you in sobriety. You don't need me to tell you to do that. You can do that on your right. own. And phase three is where you do that on your own. And so I'm so Ms. proud of you. I need everybody. I'm sorry, say that again. I need my belt to help her out. Mm -hmm. I understand. All right. And so she don't like I that mean, belt that I use. Oh, she says she don't like that belt that I use. All righty. Everybody should have a good belt. I have a whacking stick. I have a whacking stick at my house. Yes, I do. And it says Granny's whacking stick. And I had to let some other folks know I will whack other people with it as well. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I need everybody in the courtroom to join me in congratulating Miss Harris on her promotion to phase three. Congratulations, Miss Harris. We are so proud of you. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right, and so Miss Robs, get with Miss Harris about working on her uh, on her community service in lieu of fines and costs. And so we can get her in a good place. Uh, some of those costs, I'm sure she'll have to pay, but we should be able to get her in a really good place with community service. And so now that she's in phase three, Ms. Robs, that means she will not come back to see me until February 4th. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So your return to court is February 4th. Okay. 2021. Okay. I'll put it down for 8:30. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Keep up the great work you're doing. Very, very proud of you. Thank Take you. care. I'm and thank you, sister, you. for being in her corner. Thank you. I'm always there. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm glad to see you. All right. I'm glad to see you again, Judge Holmes. 
I'm glad to see you too. And I hope that even though you're in phase three, eventually we'll make it back to the courtroom. If everybody does their part, everybody do your part, include, including considering that vaccination. Everybody do your part. We're going to get through this. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Very good. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Bye -bye. Officer, who do I have up next? Next, Your Honor, is Mr. Ernest Wilson. Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson, are you able to hear me? Okay. I don't yes, know where I'm he able. is. I'm able to hear you. All right, I don't see you on the video. I guess I'm having a problem with the video because it kept just kept signing me off and signing me on twice since 8 30. Oh, you know what happened? You were eating in my courtroom. My officer indicated no eating. And so you know what I did? I turned off your video. And oh, so now God. I'm asking you to start it. Yeah, you can't eat in the courtroom. It okay. throws my whole psyche off. Okay. <laughs> Can you start your video? I just sent you a message. All right. While he's doing that, Mr. Wilson, is he a transfer case? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Griffin, while he's turning out, there he is. If you could read the case number into the record. Okay, Your Honor, this is case 1936817. Ernest Wilson. All right, thank you. And Mr. Wilson, state your full name for the record. Ernest Wilson, Jr. All right, and good morning and happy new year to you. Happy new year to you. All right, how are you today, Mr. Wilson? I'm doing fine. That's good, how was your holiday? Oh, it was great and peaceful. It was? Tell me, what did you do? Uh, stayed home for the first time in 34 years. Wow. So you would usually work? So I had, um, had a um, lobster dinner with my daughter. Oh, look at you. Yeah, Very good. All right. Very good. Very good. Were you able to maintain all your testing and the requirements of the program? While you, during the holidays? Uh, yes, I was. Yes, uh, did you have any challenges with? Yes. All right, you gotta make sure you let me finish because my court reporter can't record us both together. All right, and okay, so. Keep coming back, to the, it's unstable. It the is? It's unstable, yes. Okay, so that's your connection. My connection is real stable. Okay. I'm stable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wilson, tell me what you've learned over the holidays about yourself, about your, your path of recovery, about sobriety. Tell me something you've learned. Uh, that it's been, been great not even not working through uh, the holiday, uh, that the stability of uh, being sober is, is a, a God-given task for you. So believing what you have to do and how you have to do it is to maintain your stability, maintain the stability of family surrounding you and family enjoying that you're sober. Yes, and so is your family enjoying your sobriety, Mr. Wilson? Uh, they, they have, uh, and they're enjoying not inviting me uh, to things that they're having. Uh, I'll find out afterwards and, and they make it to where it's uh, the adults, the children, the nieces and nephew. And so a lot of them are practicing uh, being sober along with me. Good, that's a good thing. Very good, very good. All right, Mr. Griffin, I'm gonna have you read into the record just some of the, because I know he's new. And so if you could just place those things on the record, because I don't have the assessment piece the risk analysis or where he's in outpatient treatment. Okay, Your Honor, this uh, Ernest Wilson, this is first review. He signed his contract with us on um, 12 17 20. Uh, he has been tested twice a week. All tests have been negative at general. Uh, he did enroll in um, uh, 
outpatient treatment. I just received an email. Uh, he's at NCADD. Uh, his counselor is um, Ms. Stewart. So I've had a chance to look at it. It just came through my phone, so I'll, I'll take a look once I get back to my desk. And he asked me to attend an online class for me. So um, Mr. he did um, do the um, Needs Plus. I sent him a link, and I have it in file, so I have to uh, review that also tonight. Okay. Uh, he's off to a great start. He's doing everything that he's supposed to be at this point or whatever. So, uh, man, I've uh, been talking to him at least once a week or whatever, um, any questions and stuff, and he's calling me. So, he's very you know, involved in his sobriety. So, I'm, I'm proud of him that he's off to a great start. No problems. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. All right. Very good. Did you hear that, Mr. Wilson? You're doing everything you're supposed to do. Yes, ma'am. All right. Very good. Very good. And so, Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens? Yes, thank you, Judge. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Wilson. I believe I talked to you when you first came into the program and signed your contract. Uh, you're doing a, an excellent job. Keep up the good work. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, we're proud of you, what you've accomplished so far. Uh, stay safe, Mr. Wilson. And Happy New Year to you, Mr. Wilson. Happy New Year to everybody in the system. Yes, wonderful. All right, Mr. Wilson, if there's nothing that you need from us, then I am going to schedule you to come back to see me. Again, for everybody, this is going to be in our virtual courtroom. Until further notice, we will be meeting in the virtual courtroom. So you will return on January 21st, 2021. Mr. Griffin, you want to put him at 830? Yes. 830 a.m., okay? Wonderful, thank you. All right, wonderful, good to see you. All right, officer. Thank you, Your Honor. This is Selena Wright. Ms. Wright, I'm going to ask you to unmute your phone. Good morning to you. Good morning, Judge Holmes. All right, state your full name for the record. My name is Selena Wright. And Ms. Wright, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom this morning? Yes, I do. Wonderful. Let me read your cases into the record. I have the following. SP1083941, SP1091000, counts one, two, and three. I also have case number Z805, 8581, and then Z805-8601. Ms. Right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You look good. How are you doing? I'm blessed. Thank you. Yes, you are. Tell me, what did you do to bring in the new year? Actually, I was sleeping. My kids called and woke me up. <laughs> they called and woke you up? They called wishing me a happy new year. Yeah, wishing me a happy new year woke me up and all I heard was gunshots. Actually, I couldn't go to sleep till about three. It was crazy, yeah. but I'm blessed. I was in a home. I was sober. All right. Very, very good. Did you do everything you were supposed to do over the holidays with your testing, yes. with your outpatient treatment? You did? Yes. All right. And how did that go? No challenges? No, not at all. All right. Very good. I'm trying to find me another job. Okay. I just been you trying still... to find me another job. You're not back at Sinai Grace? No, I'm terrified to work there now. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're looking. All right. I have a, um, did you ever... Ashley? Hello? Yes, I'm listening to you. Hello. Yeah. Ashley, we can hear you. Um, I went on an interview last. You hear me? Ashley, I went on an interview last week. I got that job. It's part-time in Troy, but I have an interview today. Hopefully I get that. Well, I know I got it. And I have an interview tomorrow too. Look at you. Very good. Very, very good. Well, I hope that which job do you want? The one you're interviewing for today or for tomorrow on tomorrow? 
the one for today and the one for tomorrow. And I'm not going to overwhelm myself, but the one for tomorrow is from 7 a.m. to 2.30. And that's kind of going to interfere with me in court and everything. The one today is an overnight shift. So, All right. Just, just know that jobs don't interfere with court. Uh, you just have to make some sacrifices to make it work. Okay? Yes. And you've been on track. Um, you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? Yes. And yes. so we'll work with you. We will work yes, with you. All right. What's happening with your matter with Judge King? Miss Drew, that's that case. One second. That's that case I told you about. If you can find out how we can get him a hearing date, I emailed it. I texted it to you. No, they've been calling. That's the one I told you about. They've been calling and calling and can't get anybody to get a hearing date. I just sent it the case to you on your phone. All right. I'm sorry about that. What happened with, with Judge King's case? Okay, I was supposed to see him on the 8th, December the 8th, but they moved it to April the 11th. Oh, oh wow. Okay. All right. You just have to wait it out, right? Yes. All right. Tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. Again, patience and just pray. Stay prayed up. <laughs> Yeah, patience and pray it up, okay? And you've been doing that and it's working for you? Yes, it is. All right. What about your outpatient treatment? Are you being open and honest with them? Yes. You are? Yes, I am. All right. Yes. All right. Very good. It failed to send to you. All right. Very good. Very good. What do you need from us? Nothing, just keep me in y'all prayers. That's it. All right. And we certainly will do that. We certainly will do that. All right. And so, Ms. Ross, what do you want to tell me? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Wright is compliant with her testing. Um, she's in compliance with her outpatient uh, with the development center. Mr. Um, she is in compliance That's with the for community service. She only has six hours left. She's doing her community service with New Light. Um, she, uh, with New Light, she has, uh, again, six hours left. Um, she's completed the sobriety video. She's completed 100 AA meetings. Uh, she does have a balance. Um, and but overall, Your Honor, she's in compliance. Uh, she's been in contact with me frequently. She constantly checks in. Um, and this lets me know her progress. Um, I have no issues or uh, with Miss Wright at this time, Your Honor. She's in compliance. All right. What are we doing about arms? She does need to do the arms program. We work. Um, we're looking for the March arms for her. Okay. In, in, in March, Your Honor. Once she has us okay. with her finances. All right. That's fine. That's fine. All right, Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens. Anything? Yes thank, yes, thank you, Judge. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Wright. Uh, good report. You're doing everything we ask. We understand it's not it's not an easy program, but you're working the program. Uh, keep up the good work. Be safe, and Happy New Year to you, Mr. Wright. Happy New Year. The same to you all. And Your Honor, if I might add, Ms. Wright, I went to bed a little bit earlier than you did on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> But not by much. So you, you all lasted me. But congratulations on a good report. Happy New Year to you. Uh, hope to see you again. Thank you. All right. I have Miss Wright coming back for a face to face with you, Miss Robs, yes, and that will be on January twenty eighth, two thousand twenty one, at eight thirty a.m. You all can work out the logistics. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Good to see you, Miss Wright. Continue to do well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So it is scheduled for here? Yeah. January 23rd. See that day? Yeah. Yeah. Can you PDF this to me so I can email it out? Huh? I'll do it right now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Who's next? 
Nolan Johnson, I'm having to go into a breakout room. Oh, is he on? Uh, Mr. Johnson, are you on? Where is he, Mr. Reed? Mr. I don't see him. No. I don't see him. He must, does he have his camera on? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. I don't see a face. Oh, I see a block now. All right, uh, Mr. Johnson needs to go. Good morning. Um, Mr. Johnson needs to go in a breakout room with the attorneys. He has issues. Um, my plan was to send him to jail. And I just need you to know jail is still on the table for me, Mr. Johnson, because on no day will you be able to do what you want to do in my courtroom or in a program that I'm presiding over. It's never going to happen. So you need to make up your mind if you want to work the program or just do your time. And I'd love to see you work the program. I love to work with you. But if you want to do your time, just know you are already three fourths of the way there. And so who's going in the breakout room with Mr. Johnson? I'll do, I'll do that, Judge. All right, Mr. Fikens and Mr. Johnson, you will receive an invitation for breakout room number one. Please accept it and we'll keep moving, Mr. Reed. All right, thank you, Mr. Griffin. Who's next on the, the docket? Next, Your Honor, is Ms. Griffin Orlando. Ms. Griffin Orlando? I'm sorry. Transfer case. Transfer case. All right. Very good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. State your name for the record. Teresa Griffin Orlando. Good. All right. Very good. Do you agree to have your hearing this morning in our virtual courtroom? Yes. All right. Very good. Mr. Griffin, can you put the... Case number on the record for me, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, this is case 2007081SD, uh, Teresa Griffin Orlando. All right, thank you. How are you doing, Ms. Griffin Orlando? I'm doing great, Your Honor. Very good. How was your holiday? It was wonderful with all the kids and grandbabies. All right, did you do anything special? Uh, New Year's Eve with the one granddaughter, her and I did a 300 piece puzzle. Oh, wow. You finished it? Yep. Wonderful. All right. Kept your mind engaged. So that had to be a lot of fun, right? Yes. Very, very good. Were you able to do all of your testing and your outpatient treatment during the Christmas break? Okay, so I have done my testing. I've gone to AA. I was supposed to have my outpatient um, uh, appointment yesterday. So then when I went in, first they asked for my ID. And I said, well, I don't have ID because my license has been revoked. But I did find an ID from work that I could use. Then they were like, well, now we have to check for availability and eligibility. And I was like, I was in last week and gave you all this work. So we have to reschedule till next Wednesday. All right, but you're staying on top of it, right? Yep, yep. Okay, and I know that you have private insurance and so yep. continue to stay on top of it because outpatient treatment is mandatory in the program. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, very good, very good. And so was there anything that you struggled with over the holidays at all? Nope. Not at this time. All right. Tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. Uh, learn to reach out to other people through AA okay. meetings. Okay. And what kind of people are you reaching out to? People who are sober. Yes. People who are fighting to be on a path of recovery just like you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Mr. Griffin. Okay, Your Honor, um, uh, this is uh, Ms. Teresa Griffin Orlando. This is her first review. Um, like she said, she has been tested. I've received her test results. Like I said, I've been uh, testing place in Tampa. Uh, she has been um, attending her virtual meeting. She, she did communicate to me yesterday that she was having problems with her insurance. So, me and her had a talk. So, we got a, a plan after the plan. So, this don't work out with this place because they was kind of giving her a hard time with her ID, trying to verify if it's really her and things like that. So we are um, looking to some other things, but other than that, she's off to a great start. She's doing exactly what she's supposed to do. 
Uh, she has any questions or anything she calls me, you know, so she's doing what she's supposed to do. So proud of her, just keep up the good work and I'll uh, you know, look forward to working with you. All right, very good. Mr. Griffith, she's another one that I needed the assessment results and the risk. Yeah, I got to extend it to her. When I send it the first time, she's going to be able to open it. So I'm going to have much more to send it to her again so she can take the uh, mean plus room. All right. All right, very good. Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens? Yes, thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Griffin, congratulations, a good report. I know you're very new to the program. Uh, don't get overwhelmed. I believe we talked when you signed your contract. You're at level one. Uh, we're looking at three main things, drug testing, counseling, 12-step or NA meetings. Um, you're doing a good job so far. Keep up the good work. Be safe. Happy New Year. And, and, and Ms. Griffin, you remind me of another client that we have on the docket today. And I'll, I'll mention that when the other client comes in. But thank you. Uh, be safe, Ms. Ms. Griffin. Thank you. All right. Mr. Fikas is in another breakout room. And so I just want to commend you for being able to stay on track, Ms. Griffin Orlando, uh, to continue with the mandates of the program. I hope that you're feeling better. I, I hope that things are definitely different for you and that you're noticing a change in yourself as you continue to stay clean and sober. Yes, Your Honor. I do have one question. So when I was at the um, physician office yesterday, they said that the court should supply me with like some type of piece stating that my license is revoked so that I don't have to show an ID. I I don't know. That's all they said to me. And I, I, like, I don't know anything about that, Mr. Gri Mr. Okay. Reed. I see Mr. Griffin shaking his head. No. No. I told her. Okay. If I need That's to, fine. Um, if I need to provide her a letter or something like that, I told her I would to just, uh, just to send to her. So I do that today just to let her film know that she is on probation with the court and she's required to complete the outpatient treatment. But this is the first of all, I, I heard of that, but um, I told her I would send that to her. So I need that done today, you know? Okay. All right. Did, Did you hear just, that? Yeah. They were just trying to say that I wasn't the person that was trying to get the treatment. And I'm like, right. okay. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah. All right. So. Well, hopefully you have another ID. Um, I get it because there's so much fraud that goes on in the world. Um, and so hopefully you were able, you'll be able yeah. to provide another ID, another source of identification. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. If nothing else, Mr. Griffin, Ms. Drew, are we still good on January 21st? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, so you have 12. Can we do? Should she be on Friday? I mean, I don't think our docket that big on the 27th. Okay. But on Friday, I mean, if we have a couple of all other people. That's fine. Can you do Fridays, Miss Miss Griffin yes. Orlando? Mm -hmm. All right. And it'll be January 22nd, 2021 at 830. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Very good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. All right. Who do I have up next? Thanks, Your Honor. It's Mr. Bonnerite. All right. Mr. Bonnerite, where are you? He doesn't have his audio connected. Let's keep moving. Mr. Bonnerite, if you can hear me, you need to connect your audio. Who's next after Mr. Bonnerite? Um, Raylan Russell. Miss Russell, all right, let me have you, if Mr. Yeah, Mr. Bottom right, you don't have your audio connected. Get that worked out for me. All right, Miss Russell, thank you for unmuting yourself. Please state your full name for the record. Braylon Russell. All right, Miss Russell, you are in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom? Yes, ma'am. All right. I don't, do I have Miss Russell on my docket? She's a transfer case, Your Honor. Oh, okay. I do have the case number if you need it. Yes, please read it into the record. Thank you, Miss Cleveland. Um, her case number is 19C41492. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. 
All right, Miss Russell, I'm going to have, because this is probably your first review, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, she, no. She's, re all right. Miss Cleveland, I'm going to have you present Miss Russell for me. Um, good morning, Your Honor. She was um, accepted, Toshi Cleveland, case manager for um, Braylon Russell. She was accepted into our program on, um, where's the date on this? Let's see. I'm so sorry. She, she was accepted. Okay. Um, yeah. Right. I, I'm sorry. It's not on. I have it. It's, I have it. On November 6, 2020. Yes. So she's still new to the program. Yes, yeah, she's new. She's in phase one. I apologize. Um, Miss Russell is currently, um, she is compliant with her testing. However, um, I would mention that she did have one test result that came back as a positive. And, um, um, and um, she's also under medical care. I received um, prescriptions for her, but she had a procedure or a, um, a, a surgical procedure, I guess that's the best way to describe it because of an accident that she had. So, um, so I don't know if you want her to go in and speak with her attorney regarding that. Yes, or she definitely does because I, you did notify me of this, Miss Cleveland. And what I needed to understand is whether or not what she was testing for was something that had been prescribed by a doctor. If it was not, then she has a problem. Okay, she's, so she's um, got to provide the documentation to uh, for me to understand why she would be testing positive uh, for the substance that you told me about. Yes. And so, Mr. So, Reed, I will do a couple of people who are not having an issue. If you could go yes, into sir. a breakout room with Miss Russell. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, does that work for you? All right, very good. So, Miss Russell, you are going to get an invitation to go to breakout room. One second. It'll be for breakout room number two. So please accept it. Okay. Here's Miss All right, there we go. All right, so I'll come back to Miss Russell as well. All right, who's next, officer? Next, Your Honor, Latasha Bennett. Miss Bennett. All right, Mr. Griffin, do we have any issues with Miss Bennett? No, Your Honor, you just gave her a assignment the last time she was on. Okay, okay. Uh, wonderful. I just okay. want to make sure that we need an attorney. Oh, then I'm good. Yeah. All right, I have the following matter. For Ms. Bennett, Latasha Bennett, I have case number SP791-8741, case number SX202-73681, and case number 14058-16601. And so, and then there's also this 20-GC012-82. All right, so she has the transfer case that came in, and, and then we found case. some others. Yes. Got it. All right, Miss Bennett, state your full name for the record. Latasha Bennett. All right, and Miss Bennett, you are in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. And so, Miss Bennett, Happy New Year to you. Same to you, Judge. How did you do over the holidays? I did well. I did great. Uh, what did you do? Um, just sat in the house and um, was on Zoom with my sister and nephew because we usually go to church on New Year's Eve, but we weren't okay. able to this year. All right. All right. Very good. And so did you have some difficulties with staying sober over the holidays? Not Any at all. challenges with it? No, ma'am. Why do you think you didn't have any challenges? Because I don't want to get in any trouble. <laughs> That's a good and reason I'm, to stay away I'm from stay challenges. And I'm staying away from people that, you know, does that. So it's not hard. It's, you know. All right. But you got to continue to work at it, right? 
Yes. How are you doing with your outpatient treatment? I'm doing good. You are? All right. Yeah. You, you have a good relationship with your, your therapist? Yes. I talk to her um, once a week. I talk, I go to uh, there, um, the AA class twice a week. I have to drop twice a week as well. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. And so I know that she had some other cases. We said that we would uh, hold on to those, I believe, until she showed us that she wanted to work this program. Well, she had picked up a new ticket the last time, so we gave her our assignment to do. Um, far as how she was going to, um, who she was going to lean on for help and things like that. So we got her uh, some, some things to work on. So. All right. Tell me about that. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Tell me, what, what's your plan? My plan was I had to, um, you had me do homework where I had to um, get the name the day, um, the day I called them and their response to being able to take me to work, help me out, whatever. So I wrote the date down, December 21st. Wayne Rogers asked me to take me to work. It was a yes. The same person for the next three days, it was a yes. The 28th, it was the same person, it was a yes. The 29th, I had to catch the bus. Okay, you didn't like that, did you? Not really. No. Okay. Keep going, what else happened? Nothing. December the 30th, I asked my sister, her name is Akiva Spread. It was a yes. January the 4th, Rhonda Rainey, it was a yes. And ever since then, I've been in the house. I haven't been doing anything else other than going to work and coming back home, doing my testing and coming back home. And who's taking you to testing and work now? Dwayne Rogers has been helping me out, taking me doing my testing. And All right. Who's been taking you to work and picking you up? It's basically been Dwayne Rogers a couple of times the Kiva have and Rhonda have. All right. So my whole purpose is in, in that you're not getting behind the wheel of a car, no, right? No, not at all. Haven't been behind the wheel. Because I keep seeing your face oh. and no driving. No. <laughs> Did she just imitate me? Y'all, we gonna take a moment to laugh because they cracking up over here in the courtroom. And it's not fair. They can't see y'all. They can see me. She said, no driving. <laughs> You're right, Miss Bennett. You're right. No driving. We don't drive in problem-solving court while I'm trying to help you, right? Yes. She got it down. All right, Miss Bennett, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. All right, very good. Thank you for completing your assignment. Um, I'm glad to you look better today. What's going on? What's different? Are you just feeling sorry, better because you're not you. drinking? No, I'm I not said drinking. you look. But I said you look better. Is there something going on? You, you look better today. Maybe I got a lot of sleep. Okay, I'm that could happy. be it. I'm just, I'm just happy not to be getting in trouble. Not to, um, you know be out there doing the wrong things, you know? It just feels good, you know? Yes, it does. And you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of yourself. Did you set some goals for yourself in 2021? Well, my goal is to uh, continue this program and learn a lot from it, get my license back and, you know, just do right. All right. Those are all good goals, Miss Bennett. Those are all good goals, and we're here to help you achieve those goals, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Mr. Griffin? Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mom, uh, she's in outpatient treatment at NCADD. Her counselor, counselor is Ms. Allison. Uh, like she said, she has been testing twice a week. Uh, she did complete the assignment that she assigned her to, and she got been attending her online twice a week. So uh, since the last hearing, she's doing everything she's supposed to do. So, uh, I also talk to her on a weekly basis. Um, so um, she got any questions, she uh, know the call me or any concerns. So uh, she's doing well, like you said. She, she's in a better place today than she was two weeks ago. So. All right. Very good. Very, very good. All right, Mr. Feigens, anything you'd like to add? Um, I, I only want to say she's, it's a great report, Ms. Bennett. Um, we, I do want to, I, I did talk to the prosecutor about her three matters. 
Oh, she gave me a recommendation a while ago, but we kind of put that off and I just want to confirm that for the next time if I can, Your Honor. I, I don't have that in writing, uh, but we, we can work something out where she pleads guilty on one of the matters and the other two can get dismissed. And we'd ask that it be put on the, the, the drug court program uh, uh, docket. Um, but I don't All have right. that yet. You, you don't have a confirmation of it yet? Not yet. Okay, so when you have it, as long as Ms. Bennett continues to do what she's supposed to do, we can go forward with that offer. But I know you have to solidify it. And so maybe by the next hearing in two weeks? By the next hearing, by the next hearing we will have that, Your Honor. All right, very good. That's good news, Ms. Bennett. Yes, Thank it you. is. Yes, it is. All right, Mr. Griffin, I have Ms. Bennett. She's two weeks. Should she be returning on the 22nd? Yes. All right, January 22nd, 2021 at 8.30 a.m. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. Very good. Good to see you, Ms. Bennett. Keep up the good great work, you. okay? Thank you, and have a blessed day. You too. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right, officer. Um, let me see, Mr. Bonner Wright. Did you you still don't have audio, Mr. Bonner Wright? All right. Um, who do who do we have up next, Mr. I mean, officer. Mr. Officer. Next, Your Honor, is Anthony Wallace. Mr. Wallace, please unmute yourself for me. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Can and you so, me? Mr. Wallace, can you I see can me? see you. Yes, sir. Okay. You always in time. some dark room. Where yeah, are you? Yeah. No, I was upstairs. And that's why I said, let me come downstairs where I got the bright light. <laughs> that's the bright light? Okay. All right. Say your name, Mr. Wallace, for the record. Anthony Wallace. All right, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom this morning? I sure do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, I have the following matter for Anthony Wallace. I have case number 12059510001. Happy New Year to you, Mr. Wallace. It's a happy New Year. Happy New Year. How are you today? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very, very good. Very good. <laughs> All right, tell me, what does that mean to you? What What are you feeling great about? I didn't know my grandkids. My grandkids loved me as much when they kept, they spent the New Year. I mean, Christmas all the way to the New Year's. I ain't, you know, I know they like their grandmother, but I didn't know they showed me that much love. <laughs> now you know we go. We gonna take another break and just laugh. He said, "I knew they like their grandmother." Mr. Wallace, I mean, I'm that saying, is I'm, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Well, they probably didn't like you when you were drinking, right? It was, it was just just different. I didn't pay attention to them, you know. Yes. But now and now they have more, your attention. Now that I get them more, it just, you know, I didn't know. And then they followed me upstairs, followed me in the basement. You know, I, I didn't know they, that, that they showed me that much love that I didn't pay attention to. Yes, kids want your attention. Yes, they do. And that's why it's so critical. Do not unmute your phones, please. If I mute you, stay muted. Um, that's why, you know, it's so important that when they're in those formative years that we try to be good examples to them, right? Because they're right. watching. Yeah, they know, right. they may not know what's up, but they know when something is up, okay? And I see that. I see All that. right. Very good. Yeah. And so what did you do to bring in the new year? Oh, I just told the parents that I'm going to start getting them every week every week that would, I don't have to work. And now I don't want to put this, I want to, I almost want to turn off the live recording before my kids hear this and they <laughs> think that I should get their babies every week. Let me, sh should I go up? No, I'm I just mean, kidding. It's nothing to do out here. You know, you can't go nowhere and can't do nothing. So, I mean, it's up, they, they, they know Walmart by heart. So, because <laughs> that's only, <laughs> uh, every time they come over, granddad, you're going, you're going to take it to Walmart I said I shouldn't have signed that. So they think it's Walmart every time they come. 
Look at you. You're spending quality time with your yeah. grandkids. What do yeah, you right. notice different about yourself now that you're not drinking? That, you know, you really don't have to drink to have fun. You really don't. You do not have to drink to have fun, for real. I mean, I because I seen how much fun I was having and laughing, watching movies. I mean, and, it, 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 you know, I was focused. I was really focused. And then when I was talking to you last time, I got the new position at work. I mean, my house paid off now. I mean, a lot of stuff, did, it seemed like a lot of stuff just started happening. All right. Very good. Very uh, good. Tell me, tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. I mean, to stay focused and, you know, always, you know, see what's going on around you, you know, because it seemed as like, even though I stopped drinking, the people that were drinking, they don't want, you know, they don't even come, well, I don't, they don't come around because they talk about, oh, you ain't, you ain't, uh, you're right, I'm not, because I feel I don't have to drink. If you my friends, y'all can be around me. If not, I mean, y'all just stay where you at. Yeah, you'll get some new friends. It's okay. And I mean, until then, you've got those grandbabies. Yeah, see, and they're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They're there you friend. go. <laughs> All right. How's your outpatient treatment going with Mr. Arnold? Everything okay. And everything is going on okay. I just came from jam. I was trying to hurry up and catch y'all. I thought I was gonna miss. Yeah. I said, I said, no, no, no. Me. Your case manager had already informed me, so you were in good shape. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I, I was like, yes. my brother pulled up outside, and I was like, man, we gotta be back before nine o'clock. He was like, oh, we gonna yeah, make you're it. Good. We gonna make it. You so good? I'm trying to stay. Right. And you're doing a good job with that. You're doing a very good job with it. Mr. Gancy, what do you want to tell me about Mr. Wallace? Uh, yeah, to Mr. Wallace, he's doing great. Uh, he's doing great at outpatient treatment uh, with Mr. Arnold. Got some information about that. He's uh, screenings, uh, not missing any screens. Screenings clean. Uh, he's making meetings. And like he stated, um, he's giving me some... <laughs> some work to do to help him. He he got a promotion at work, which is uh, super great. Um, so we just have to figure out how he can uh, come on Zoom because of his hours. But um, other than that, he's he's really doing well. He's really complying with everything. Uh, so. All so right, very good. Very, very good. All right. If nothing, Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens, anything for Mr. Wallace? No, Judge. Just uh, congratulations. Keep up, uh, keep up the good work, and happy New Year. Same to you, yeah. sir. And, right. and if I might add, Your Honor, Mr. Wallace, just keep those grandbabies in sight, man. They're the most precious things in the world. Hey, I seen that over the holiday. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. All right, all right. Very good, very good, Mr. Yancey. Mr. Wallace is in phase one. Yeah. And so the return to court date, Ms. Drew, am I still on the 22nd? Yes, ma'am. All right. So can you do a Friday at nine o'clock? I'm going to have to. I, I got to tell him. I just probably have to put in a vacation day. You know, since you no, me no, no, no. You need to do a Thursday? Well, yeah, it could be Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. All right. I'm going to just put him on Thursday. Okay. January 21st, 2021. And I'll put you down for 830. If you can okay. get on that early, that would be great. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All, right. All right. Very good. It's good to see you, Mr. Wallace. Keep up the great work. Very proud of you. Happy New Year to you again. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Officer, who do I have up next? Thanks, Your Honor. It's Mr. Pedroza Alba. All right, Mr. Pedroza Alba, I turned off your video because he had me scared. He stood up and I didn't know what he was going to do. So I didn't want to go out on workers' comp. All right, here we go. I'm trying to find him because I turned him off. I, did he hang up? He's the oh, Galaxy A21. That's his. Okay, let me. 
Well, I'm trying to turn him back on. Oh, there you are. That's the wrong person. You said he's the galaxy. Okay, got it. All right, I'm gonna ask him to start his video. <clears throat> and I'm asking him to unmute as well. All right, before we get started, Ms. Hernandez, I just realized you were on my screen. Good morning to you. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Nice to see you all. Happy New Year. Let me have you raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that you will interpret the words as spoken by the parties in this matter, that you will do so completely and accurately without any additions or deletions? So help you God. I do, Your Honor. Wonderful. State your name for the record. Emma Hernandez. Thank you. And you are a court. Tell us your qualifications. Okay, um, I'm a Spanish English SCAO qualified interpreter, Your Honor. All right. Thank you so much. And then I also have someone that's a client advocate. If you could state your name as well. Hi, I'm I'm the client advocate. We can't understand. You're fading in and out. Can you hear me a little bit better? Not much. Not much? No. Let's okay, see. but you're a client advocate for Mr. Pedroza Alba. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Wonderful. All right. Mr. Yancey, I'm going to read. Uh oh, Ms. Hernandez, you have to get me together. I'm out of whack. We have to make sure we pause to give Ms. Hernandez the opportunity to interpret. I will place, go ahead. Ok, tenemos como la, la persona que eh, aboca por el cliente, la señora Sophie Lowe. Right, this is case number 16. <clears throat> Zero five seven five four seven zero one for Jose Pedroza Alba. Okay, este es el caso número uno seis cero cinco siete cinco cuatro siete cero uno del señor Juan Pedroza Alba. Mr. Pedroza Alba, please state your name for the record. Señor Pedro Salva, por favor, diga su nombre para que conste en el acta. Uh, José de Jesús Pedro Salva. Uh, José Happy. de Jesús Pedro Salva. All right, Happy New Year to you, Mr. Pedro Salva. Oh. Feliz año, señor Pedro Salva. Oh, me too. <laughs> Tú también. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Happy you, <laughs> Mr. Hernandez. Me too. Me too. Okay, gotcha. All right, very good, Mr. Petrosa okay. Alba. How did you do during the holidays with respect to staying sober? Señor Pedro Álvarez, ¿cómo le fue durante las las festividades con respecto a, parme, a, a, a permanecer sobrio? Oh, muy bien. Muy bien, nomás se me enfermé de... No, no me enfermé, pero en la familia se enfermó alguien de COVID y estuve encerrado 20 días sin trabajar, sin... pues sin nada. Uh, well, was very good, very, very good. The only thing was that I was... Well, I was not sick. Somebody in the family got sick and I have to stay 20 days inside my home, no working, not doing anything. But yeah, besides no, that... Not... Yeah, nothing. Okay, did you go and do your testing during the holidays? Okay, pero entonces usted durante las festividades fue y hizo su, sus exámenes, se tomó las muestras. Sí, exacto, exacto, sí. Yes. Con precaución. Yes, exactly, yes. With, uh, with precaution, I did. All right, very good. Tell me something that, tell me something you've learned since the last time I've seen you. Dígame algo que usted eh, ha logrado, que ha hecho desde la última vez que vino a verme. Uh, 
pues, pues la verdad me siento muy bien. Soy otra persona. Me siento muy bien. La verdad. Well, really, I, I feel very good. Honestly, truly talking, I'm another person. I'm really am. I feel very good. And tell me what's different about you that you're another person. Y dígame qué es lo que hace que, que usted se sienta que ahora es otra persona. Mm. Pues uh, llevarme bien con mi familia. Mm. Pues soy diferente. Well, getting al along better with my family. Well, I'm different. Mm. Very good. That's a good thing. You're getting along better with your family. Muy bien. Eso es una buena cosa que se esté llevando muy bien mejor con su familia. Sí. Yes. All right. Is there anything that you need us to help you with, Mr. Pedroza Alba? Señor Pedroza Alba, ¿hay alguna otra cosa que usted necesite que nosotros los ayude con lo que nosotros lo ayudemos a usted? Pues um, no, pues todo está muy bien, la verdad. Well, well, no, really, because everything is a very good, truly very good. All right. Mr. Yancey, let me hear from you. Yes, Your Honor. Señor Yancey, déjeme saber de usted si su señoría. Uh, Mr. Alba, he's he's going quite well. Um, um, regarding those screenings you asked him about, I didn't see any missed screenings, so he kind of confirmed he was still going. Bueno, el señor Pedro Salva está muy bien este, con sus, sus exámenes, ¿verdad? Este, yo los estoy viendo ahorita y sí, él ha continuado con ellos y está bien. And he already completed outpatient and alcohol highway safety class. Y él ha completado este, con todas, todas sus clases eh, ambulatorias. Él ha, eh, con, con respecto a, a clases de seguridad, él ha cumplido con todos. He's attended NA meetings and I sent him a referral for community service. Y él está atendiendo a todas eh, las reuniones de alcohólicos anónimos. So other than that, he's doing well for phase one. He's doing everything I've asked of him. Y este, él ha hecho todo bien, él está haciéndolo bien, él ha hecho todo bien para la fase en la que se encuentra, él ha cumplido con todo. All right, very good. Uh, Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens. Yes, Judge, I would just say uh, keep up the good work, sir. Be safe and Happy New Year to you. Thank you, Judge. Ok, señor Feke, señor Reed, algo sí, su señoría, el señor Reed, este, yo solamente tengo que decir que eh, lo está haciendo muy bien, que siga lo haciendo así y que tenga un feliz año. Mm. Gracias, su señoría. And, and Your Honor, if I could say this to uh, Mr. Alba, Feliz Navidad, sir. Oh, sí, sí. <laughs> y se, señor, eh, su señoría, si le puedo oh. decir al señor Alba, Feliz Navidad, señor. <laughs> feliz Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too. <laughs> All right. And for Miss, is it Loeb? That's correct. Can you hear me a little bit better now? Yes, yes much better. Fantastic. Yeah. I All just, right. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to add on to what Officer Yankee said. Ms. Rosa Alba has followed through on all the We We can't hear you now. Better now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Pedrosa Alba is in the process of making all of the payments. So last I spoke with him, he was in the process of submitting those to the court. Um, and of course, community service was also in the process of um, finding his service site. Did you all get that? Okay. No, you'll have to say it again, or um, this is what I, I'll have you do. Mr. Yancey, if you could connect with Ms. Loeb to get that information so I don't slow down my docket. Um, I believe it's something dealing with the assignment, his community service site, 
And so please connect and get that information. Ms. Hernandez? Yes, sir. All right, I didn't know if you wanted to interpret what I, I had indicated. Okay. Señor eh, Alba, eh, la, el, el señor Yancy se va a poner en comunicación con la señora Lowe para que le dé la información que ella tiene, cuestión de poder este, entonces yo interpretarle. ¿Oyó? Sí, está bien. Yes, it's okay. All right. Mr. Pedroza Alba will come back to court on January 21st. 2021, and I'll put him on for 9.30 a.m. Ok, señor Pedro Salva. Entonces la señora Lowe se va a poner en contacto con el señor Jesse y le va a dar la información con respecto este, a su programa. Y usted tiene que volver a corte el día 23 de enero. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, you say January 23rd? 21st. First, ah, ok. El 21, thank you, Your Honor. El 21 de enero, que es jueves, y a las nueve y media de la mañana. ¿Oyó? Sí, está bien. Yeah, it's ok. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Hernandez. Thank you, Miss Lowe, if you're still with us. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pedroza okay. Alba. Gracias. Take care. Gracias. Entonces, ellos dos se van a, se van a poner de acuerdo, eh, van a compartir la información y ya usted sabe cuándo tiene que volver, ¿ok? Ok, está bien. Oh, ok, perfect. I just repeat that what he has to do and come back on January 21st. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, bye. Mr. Yeah. Can I get that RLA that you sent me? It didn't transmit over. I'm going to just send the information to them. We're having transmission issues. All right. Um, let's see. Is Mr. Bonner right ready? All right. Mr. Bonner right, state your name. Uh, Kennedy Bonner right. All right, Mr. Bonner Wright, happy new year to you. Same to you, Judge Holmes. All right, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. You are very good. And so do you agree to have your uh, hearing in our virtual courtroom? Yes. All right, very good. I have the following for Mr. Bonner Wright. Is he on my docket? Yes, ma'am. Where am I missing him? Oh, yes, I see him. Never mind. Case number 18045-16101. Mr. Bonnerwright, what did you do to bring in the new year? Um, I actually lost my uncle on the 31st. So going into the New Year's, it was it was pretty rough on the family because everybody was still at the house where he passed it, which was his son's house. So my new year, I brought it in with my family. And um, my uncle passed on the 31st. So going into New Year's was hard for me. <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Bonnerwright. How are you dealing with it? Um, Very been, sorry to hear that. I've been trying to um, been trying to um, go back east to visit my cousins to make sure they are right. But the oldest son, he taking it the worst because he was in that house when it happened. So he was he sick? It. Was your uncle sick? I believe he passed from cancer, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Very sorry to hear that. Are you still going to counseling, Mr. Bonnerwright? Um, yes, I was supposed to do my outpatient with Amherst today, but I called my counselor, Ms. Collins, and told her I'd be running a little late because I had Zoom court this morning first. No, Mr. Bonnerwright, you've been with me too long. You know how this works. We don't try to, we don't, we try to schedule to not interfere with your counseling. What you should have done was told your case manager, and then we would have made some adjustments. Not going to counseling is not an option. You know that by now. You've been with me way too long. You've been with me too long. Come on now. <coughs> You'll be with me even longer if you keep on acting like you haven't been with me too long. All right. Come on. Let's get that together. 
And so, have you been testing and doing everything you're supposed to do during the holidays? Yes, I still was reporting oh. the test. All right. Did you have Did you have any struggles with abstaining from the use of any substances? Um, no. I just um, I just I don't really go down the way unless I'm visiting a family. I don't really um, I don't really be in my old neighborhood no more or that environment. So I kind of distance myself from my childhood friends a little bit. Okay. All right. What else are you doing to stay sober, Mr. Bonner Wright? Um, I've been reading and writing. I've been taking um, a little bit of stuff I learned from Elmhurst and try to apply it to my daily life as far as finding better ways to um, cope with my addiction. All right. Do you think inpatient treatment did you some good? Yeah, it did me real good. Actually, I got a lot out of it versus what I um, didn't get out of um, QBH. All right. And so are you glad now in hindsight that you did in fact do the inpatient treatment? Yes, I am. Very good. Very good. What do you need us to help you with, Mr. Bonner Wright? Um, I'm currently back looking for a job. I ended up losing my job at Dana. So anything relating to um, employment, if you can help me with some more get shared links with me or anything that'd be helpful as far as pertaining to all, um, right. all right miss robs um whatever job leads we have let's connect him um also i know that we have the lead with focus hope now mm -hmm. and so let's connect mr bonner right to get him working now that we have him you know clean and sober where he's not using substance and he can maintain the job we want you to be able to do that. Okay, Mr. Bonner, right? Okay, Judge Holmes. All right. Very good. Very good. How's that new baby? He doing all right. I dropped him off at the babysitter house this morning. He all right. Okay. And then you came back home? Um. Yes, I came back home. You know this is streamed live, Mr. Bonner, right? I know, Judge Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just trying to keep you, you know, out of trouble. All right. All right. So, uh, Miss Ross, what do you want to tell me about Mr. Bob Wright, who dropped off the baby and came back home? Go ahead. I object, Your Honor. I object. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Mr. Bonner Wright is doing really well. He completed Elmhurst um, inpatient December 29th, 2020. Um, I was able to receive a, a progress report from Ms. Collins indicating that uh, Mr. Bonner Wright was engaged. He started to develop, um, to identify his triggers. Um, he was also put on the 1-800 line for screening for a psyche valve. It's just a matter of uh, them following through with the um, appointment date and time. He is compliant with testing. He's also signed back up for outpatient with uh, Elmhurst for Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays um, for outpatient services. Um, he has completed, Your Honor, his 40 hours of community service. He still needed 16. I was going to coordinate with, um, I'm going to coordinate with, with Ms. Collins to see if Elmhurst could assist in that area. Um, also, um, Mr. Bonner Wright has completed his 100 hours of uh, AA meetings, uh, the sobriety video. Um, he does have some fees and fines um, that he needs to uh, work on. Um, and he, I will send him some, the additional information regarding Focus Hope. Um, outside of that, Your Honor, he is doing much better than he was um, prior to entering into residential. Um, and I have no other, no other information at this time, Your Honor. He's doing well. All right, very good, Mr. Bonner. Right, that is good news. You should be so proud of yourself. <laughs> I am. Yes, you certainly should be. I'm definitely proud of you. Definitely, Mr. Reed, Mr. Vikings. Yes, Judge. Thank you. Uh, good report, Mr. Bonner. Right, you keep up the good work. I'm sorry for your loss. But you stay safe and stay positive. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. And Your Honor, if I might add, even though I objected uh, when the judge said that, Mr. Bonner, right, you take care of those those kids. You're their father. You do the best job you can. 
Okay. Absolutely. All right. Very good. I am really proud of you, Mr. Bonner Wright. You know, it used to used to make me get a little nervous when I'd see you pop up on the screen or when you walk in the courtroom or when they just mention a name that begins with a B. I used to get a little nervous, but look at you now. You are doing a fantastic job. I know it hasn't been easy. I know it's been challenging, but you're doing it. So that lets me know you're capable. And I hope that it also lets you know that you're capable. And so keep doing what you're doing. You're raising children and they're watching. And everything you do, it counts for something. Okay? And okay. so make it count. Make it count. Be that good example of a father, of a law-abiding citizen, of a working man. Be that example because your son is watching. Okay? Okay, Judge Holmes. All right. You know that we're here if you need us. You're going to come back for a face-to-face -face at 830 on January 28th, 2021 with Miss Robs. And you all can work out the logistics, Miss Robs, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Very good. Take care. Have a good day. Okay, you too. All right. I need to do Miss Knowles. Is she up next? Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, you're right. Two seconds for me. Yes. What is she in custody for now? Is it on my warrant? Yeah, she yeah, she, she got into another fight, fight, I think, and then they ran herself and uh, picked her up. I'm sick of Miss Chill Cut. Yep, I can arraign her because she going she gonna go sit in jail. She like jail. That's where she gonna be. Okay. I had an in depth conversation with Miss Robs, mm -hmm. telling Miss Chill Cut when she was going to get her daughter. First of all, you always end up beat up. So that lets me know you're not a good fighter. So I need you to stop running your mouth because every time you run your mouth, somebody pop you in it and you end up beat up. So go get your daughter and come back home because if you go to jail fighting again, I'm going to let you sit there. So she back in jail fighting, she's going to sit there. Yeah, she's, on the yeah, yeah. she's on the docket the other day and she didn't show up. She didn't show up. I know. I just put a warrant out yeah. and they kept her because she over there fighting. Always getting socked in the mouth. She talking too much. Okay. All right. Miss Robs, didn't we just have an hour long discussion about Miss Chill Cut? Yes, Your Honor, we did. We we had a very thorough discussion. Um, I was trying to sneak out to Great Lakes Crossing and spend some money that nobody knew I was going to spend. And Miss Robs had me sitting down in the middle of the mall, all masked up, talking about Miss Chill Cut. I couldn't get none of the stuff I wanted because I needed to get home before my husband. And, you know, and just messed me all up. So she knows she going to jail today. I missed all my sales, all my deals, talking about Miss Chill Cut, wanting to encourage her not to fight because she always getting beat up. And now she's still fighting it. And and all of, mm -mm, she going to jail today. I didn't even get to shop. I didn't get none of my stuff I wanted. It. All right. I'm, let me Honor, come back. Let me see. Your Honor, on behalf of your husband, right. we uh, don't object oh, to that. I <laughs> 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 they don't even know why I went. Snuck out there. Hell. And then she tied me down the whole hour with Miss Chill Cut. All right. What you want? Miss uh, Miss Robs, can you uh, check your uh, uh, text for me? I just need a little information so I can give Miss uh, Drew her location and everything. Yes, All right, come on, let's do Miss Knowles. Is Miss Knowles up next? Yes, she Knowles. should be. All right, Miss Knowles said the judge is fussing. I really don't want to be up next after the judge is fussing, but it's okay. I'm not fussing at you. I'm good. I'm back center. All right, Miss Knowles, unmute yourself and give me your full name for the record. Sure, I know. All right, Ms. Knowles, you are in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom? Yes. Wonderful. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. How are you? I'm okay. I'm fine. I know this has been a tough season for you, but you're still smiling. Yeah, it's been rough, but... I'm surprised. I'm surprised at myself. I'm stronger than I thought I was. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> you are stronger than you thought you were. Mm -hmm. Very good, Miss Knowles. All right, how did you do with respect to maintaining sobriety during the holidays? Fine. I was fine. I um I was able to see family. I was able to move around a little bit to see family um, for Christmas and uh, New Year's. I stayed home because I had a 
incident the day before New Year or the day before New Year's Eve, I had an incident where I broke my ankle. So, yeah, I know. So I, I was able to sit down at home on New Year's Eve and me and my daughter just watched the ball drop. Yeah. All right. Are you taking good care of yourself? I am. I'm trying. I really am. Um, you know, with the respect of the hip surgery, everything went perfect. I could, I, everything went absolutely perfect. And I was getting back into the habit of walking as normal and doing the steps because I still have to do steps when I walk um, my stairs in the home. That's where I fell uh, on the 30th of December. So this is a slight setback, but my hip is perfectly fine. Even though I fell, nothing injured my hip. So I'm blessed for that. And the ankle is a fracture. I, I can't wait there on it, but I'm fine. I'm okay. And so- Aren't you glad you're sober right now, Ms. I am. I am. Because I don't know how I would have handled all of this so, so much, so, so much in, in one short period of time. I don't know how I can handle it if I wasn't sober and if I didn't have a support system. That's right, that's right. I'm so proud of you, I am. Um, Ms. Rob shared some of the, the hardships that you were experiencing, but also shared that you were still doing what you were supposed to do and, and still was maintaining a positive and a good attitude in doing it. And so I'm, I'm extremely, extremely proud of you. I know I haven't read a case number into the record. Ms. Ms. Ross, is this a transfer case? Uh, no, Your Honor, it's, uh, would you like her case number? Yeah, I did not, she's not on my docket, or am I overlooking her? No. Yeah. Oh, she's in warrant status. No, sure. Is, why is Ms. Knowles, if she's in warrant status, let's take her out of warrant status. She's not in warrant status. Okay, um, let's add her to my docket though. Okay. Give me a second. Let me pull her her sheet. And so, Miss Robs, yes, tell me, uh, update me on Miss Knowles. Uh, Your Honor, Miss Knowles, uh, she's currently in phase uh, two. She's doing really well, Your Honor. Um, she's keeping me up to date with all of um, with everything that's been going on with her. Um, she's been um, providing all the all of the documentation. She's completed her 100 AA meetings. Um, she's we're waiting for her discharge paperwork. I reached out to her, um, her therapist at Eastwood. They haven't responded. Miss Nose did as well. Uh, I want to follow up and reach out again today, uh, but she should be complete. Uh, she should be complete uh, for outpatient. It's just a matter of paperwork. But she's completed her 40 hours um, of community service with Dr. Alexander with, at New Light. She's completed the arms program in August of last year. She's completed the alcohol highway safety. She's completed the sobriety video. Um, she's completed, uh, she's sending in payments um, to her balance. Um, she's in compliance, Your Honor, prior to um, her surgery. You know, she was, uh, she's complying with testing. Uh, no missed screens, Your Honor. She's doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. You are doing a very good job. Tell me, what have you learned so far, Miss Knowles? Oh, that I'm strong. I I can say it again. I'm strong. I I I didn't feel like I was strong for a long time, and it's probably that probably had a lot to do with me relying on a substance. I didn't, but being going through challenges and not having to lean on anything, but faith. And God, I, I learned that I'm a strong person. Yes, yes, very good, very good. Mr. Reed, Mr. Fikens? Uh, yes, Judge, thank you. Uh, Ms. Knowles, a good report today. Keep up the good work. I'm, I'm hearing something about maybe you fell down and yeah. injured yourself. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, stay strong, uh, be safe, uh, and Happy New Year to you, Ms. Knowles. Happy New Year. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. And your honor, if I might add, uh, what, what a great uh, uh, testimony you gave today, Ms. Knowles, about how you believe in yourself. That uh, an ankle injury is terrible. I've gone through it. It's, it's hard to recover from. 
keep up the great work, both physically and mentally. It sounds like you're in a great mental uh, spirit that you can believe in yourself. That will get you through it. I promise you it will get you through it. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. All right. Very good. Very good. So, Ms. Knowles, if you don't have anything else for the court, you're going to do a face-to-face -face with Ms. Robs on January 28th, 2021. I'll schedule it for 8.30 a.m. that you all can work out the logistics, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, good to see yeah. you. Glad you're doing well. Keep up thank the great work, okay? Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Robs. You're welcome. All right, very good. All right, I believe we skipped Ms. Russell, so I need to circle back to Ms. Russell. Is that correct? Yes, correct. All yes, right, good. let's do Ms. Russell. Ms. Russell, I'm going to have you unmute yourself. Give me just one second, please, you all. I need to stand up so you all are going to have to adjust the camera in just a second. I need to stand up. I'm sitting down too long. Not that much higher because I, I, I don't have my heels on. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell y'all who clowned me yesterday. Oh, y'all not with Mental Health Court, but Mentor Scott picked up some furniture for Mr. Wyatt. And, oh, he clowned me. He was like, I didn't realize you was coming. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Can you move that camera for me? Can you catch the top? Yeah, so they don't think I'm bald headed at the top. All right, wonderful. All right, Miss Russell, state your full name for the record. I'm Braylon Russell. Good morning, Miss Russell. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you. Miss Russell, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom this morning? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. I have the following for Braylon Russell 19C. 41492. And so Miss Cleveland has already updated us. And I, I moved you because you had to go to a breakout room to speak privately with your attorney. And so was it who went in the breakout room with Miss Russell? I, I did, uh, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Reed, what do you want to tell me? I just that I thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to talk with Miss Russell in the breakout room. Uh, our conversation, she indicated that uh, on December the 17th, she had a surgical procedure. She broke her clavicle, and um, as a result of that, she was given two prescriptions. One was for swelling, and one was for pain. And I believe that she indicated she did take those prescriptions, and... I don't know what the word, Judge. I haven't talked to Miss Cleveland to know whether or not they were narcotics, but she did take those prescriptions, and that may be the reason why she tested positive for an opiate. She indicates to me that she did not intentionally take anything other than that. Uh, she, do she does reside with her aunt, and her aunt is on some form of narco medication. I don't know if she might have mistakenly taken that. Her position. No, we don't mistakenly take people medicine. Not while we in drug treatment court. We don't. We don't make those kind of mistakes. We don't. Judge, she, she is the she is a new person to drug treatment court. She was advised that she is um, responsible for whatever she puts in her system. So she takes responsibility. She just wants the court the court to know that she would not intentionally violate the contract and put something in her system that was um, illegal for the contract. Uh, but I would ask Mr. Cleveland uh, about the medications that she informed her of the pursuant to the surgery that she had on December the 17th. Um, Ms. Cleveland, let me ask you this. Did Ms. Did Ms. Russell provide you with any information uh, regarding the substance medical documentation regarding the substance that was found in her testing? I actually did receive confirmation of medical documentation and two photographs of the prescriptions. Um, I can tell you that what was found on the, on the positive screen is not likely to have been from these two prescriptions. 
that she received. Um, they're non-narcotic. And um, I know Ms. Russell and I talked about that prior to her medical procedures or any medical um, consultations that she was having with her physician, that she is not to have narcotic um, narcotic medications. We, we have had a discussion about that. And I know at the beginning, I'm, I'm hope that I hope it is my hope that I made it very clear that when you're in drug treatment court, everything has to be non-narcotic. But um, I know the two prescriptions that she has, they do have her name on them. They are related to the medical procedure um, that form that I see. And um, it does not appear that these two medications would cause a positive history. Judge, and my so, client. Go ahead, Mr. Reed. Yes, Judge. My client informed me uh, about the medications. I didn't know if they were narcotic or non-narcotic. Now I know they're not. They're non-narcotic. The other thing that I placed on the record was the fact that she does reside with someone else who does have some narcotics in the in the medicine cabinet. So that may have been it, uh, Judge. I advised her that she needs to be aware of whatever she puts in the system. She's in the court on a drinking and driving case, not on a appeal case, but uh, she w does accept responsibility, Judge. Um, I'm asking that yeah. uh, she be given a warning because she is relatively new to the program. Thank you. Well, no, she's not getting a warning until she tells me how that opiate ended up in her test results. I'm not playing this game because first of all, how old are you, Miss Russell? I'm 24 years old. You're 24 years old. And you know that you don't go into somebody's medication cabinet and take their medicine. You know that, right? So yes, I'm not buying this, that, that your aunt has an, a narcotic and you may have accidentally taken her medicine. No, at 24, we don't accidentally take anybody's medication because you can accidentally take somebody's medication and kill yourself. And so, no, I'm not buying that. So she's not gonna get a verbal warning until I know how did that opiate end up in her system. She's gotta take responsibility. That's a part of this program, Mr. Reed. Sacrifice, <laughs> accountability, and discipline. And she's not gonna sit here at 24 years old and tell me she accidentally went into a medicine cabinet and took somebody else's opiate. No, not buying it, not today. Judge, it, it, she is taking responsibility, Judge. She is saying, that she put this in her mouth, but if the court if the court wants her to say that she was trying to get high, and that's why she no, took it. No, that's not what I said, Mr. Reed. That's not what I said. You have said to me she may have taken her aunt's medication. No, either she took it or she didn't. I'm not doing that. Well, Judge, I'm I, not I saying she got high. She needs to be accountable for how that opiate showed up in her system. Well, I, Judge, I think she is saying that she took her mother, her, 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 her aunt's medication, but not intentionally to get high, Judge. That's what I'm saying. She took it, but she didn't take it to get high. So now it's not she may have taken it. It's she did take it. Well, yes, ma'am. Miss Russell, did you take your aunt's medication? Yes, I was about to ask to speak, yes. So the car accident that I did get in, I got in with my aunt. And so when I said that, I didn't say that I went into her medicine cabinet and just took her medicine. I said that because our medicine has been on the table, the same table, and I'm only using one arm. So yes, I did mistakenly take her medicine, not intentionally to, to affect my sobriety in any type of way or anything like that. But yes, I did mistakenly take her medicine and that did result in a positive drug panel. So you picked up some medicine, you didn't read the bottle, and you just took it, knowing that y'all sharing the, the, the medicine table. I know, I do yeah, apologize. I, I have been clean. I have not dropped dirty. I've, I've never done pills or anything like and that. I, any and I applaud you for that. I, I'm trying to get you to see why where I'm stuck at. So right. you, you're in a car accident. You know there's medicine on the table for more than one person. And you want me to believe that at 24, you just went on that table, any, many, money, mo, this one. I'm gonna take this one and I'm not going to read the label and make sure that it's my medication. That's what you want me to believe. 
Yes, I, I did that. I, I took someone else's medication. I took her medication and I was not supposed to. And I did not intentionally do that to affect my sobriety. I promise you, I did not. I would not do that, especially at this time, especially at the at the route that I've been going and everything that I've been going through. I I did not do it intentionally. I am I'm taking responsibility for whatever's in my system for my drops. And yes, it was a negative drop. So I am taking responsibility in anything and any consequences that come with it because it is my fault at the end of the day. And I'm not trying to make an excuse or give a facade about anything like that. So yes, I did do that, and I am taking responsibility. So Ms. Cleveland. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Cleveland, if, if she's telling me that she just picked up some medication and took one without looking, I need her to have a psychiatric evaluation. Um, Your Honor. I mean, I'm just saying she's crazy as hell, but I ain't going to say that because I'm on the record. But okay, let's go I that route. I understand, Your Honor, and I do understand also that Ms. Russell is. First time here, very fearful of um, speaking clearly and truthfully and honestly. Um, if you did perhaps look at the label, the judge is asking you to take accountability for that. To it, you know, a lot of good progress is made here when our clients talk and discuss honestly about what they've done. Judge is offering that. She is also giving an alternative to go into a um, mental health evaluation, which I don't believe at this point that you need. However, I do believe that you need to understand the question the judge is asking you and that you can speak forthrightly here in the court because this is how we address issues. So um, I can restate the judge's question again so you can you know, comment unless you're sticking by what, you know, what you're saying and then I will have to go forward with the judge's recommendation. But yes, I did. I took my aunt's medication. Did you read the um, label and understand after reading what the label? Were I took the medicine. I took the medication, knowing what I was doing, um, not thinking it was going to affect my sobriety, but it did. And I, I took some medication that I was not supposed to take. Your Honor, I believe that um, that would cause a condition of what's going on, especially if it's a pain medication with a narcotic. I, I am familiar with some things such as that it's acetaminophen with codeine that might give a certain type of um, screen result. So maybe something like that has occurred. I'm not for sure, but um, if she could describe the medication that she's taken, the two that I know that were prescribed to her do not have narcotics. And so, so Ms. Russell, here, here's, here's my issue. I don't know what my computer just did. All right, Ms. Russell, so you looked at that prescription bottle and you knew it was your aunt's bottle, right? Yes, ma'am. And you took it. Is it because your pain medication was not working? Tell me why you took it. Why'd you take it? I My pain medication wasn't working. And um, I thought that her pain medication would be more effective because her injuries were more severe. So I thought that um, I would get some, you know, better relief with the medication that she was given. Now, Ms. Russell, did you notice my voice came down like 10 notches? Yes, right? ma'am. You notice that? Yes, ma'am. You notice that? Yes, your tone. And, yes, and Ms. Cleveland, Ms. Cleveland said something very important that I know I shared with you when you came into this program through intake. Honesty will always work better for you because your honesty will equip me with the ability to help you as opposed to punishing you. Right. I can help you. I can look at, okay, this is what motivated her to do it. Now let's redirect her so we don't end up in this position again. You see how easy that works? Yes. Now you was getting ready to go to a psychiatric evaluation. You were getting ready to have some jail time held in abeyance so that the next time you blink, you go to jail. And all you had to do was be honest about taking the medication and why you took the medication. That's all you had to do. Because then my whole focus shifts. Because then I would say to Ms. Cleveland, had she told me, Judge, 
She took the medication. She knew it was her aunt, but her medication wasn't taking the edge off of her pain and she was in a lot of pain. This is what I would have said to Miss Cleveland. Okay, Miss Cleveland, let her know she cannot take somebody else's medication, but I am ordering her to go back to her doctor, let her doctor know that the medication you're giving me is not doing it. What else can I do? Because I know I can't take a narcotic. I know I'm in drug treatment court and then give the doctor, the medical professional, an opportunity to tell you some things that you need to do. And we wouldn't even be having this discussion today. Ms. Cleveland would have already had it with you. You would have been coming on my screen and I would have been saying to you, Ms. Russell, I'm glad to see you in the new year. I know it's been rough, but I'm glad you made it. You're holding on. You're doing the things you're supposed to do. But now you done took me all around the Marbury bush to get to where ultimately we would have been. And that's apologize. the thing I need you to not do. Okay. I can't help you if you're not being honest with me. I can't help you if, if you're not going to tell me what's going on. So, Miss Russell, now, Mr. Fikes, Miss Mr. Reed, what I really want to do is give your client some jail time because she 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 just lied. She just didn't tell me the truth. She wasn't honest with me. But you know what? I I understand. We we still knew at this. And you maybe you don't trust that. I, I get it. Maybe you don't trust that I really have your best interest at heart. Maybe you don't trust that. Look, I can be honest with the judge because at the end of the day, she's not here to punish me. She's here to help me. So you know what? We gonna write this one off. You get to know something about me and I get to know something about you. Because at the end of the day, Miss Russell, I can't help you without your honesty. Right. So I'm gonna still help you. I'm not gonna give you any time in advance. Okay. You come back before me again and you make me jump through a hoop, I'm gonna make you jump through 10 hoops. Okay. And they gonna all be at the Wayne County Jail. All 10 of them hoops gonna be at the Wayne County Jail. I promise you that. I'm here to help you, not to hurt you, not to punish you. I'm here to help you. You have to help me help you. So now, if the pain medicine that the doctor has given you is not working, I need you to go to that doctor, reach out today, find out what can I do. You'll be surprised. Maybe there's some other things that you can do. You can't take a narcotic. You can't take a narcotic, but there may be some other things that the doctor can do. Okay? Okay. All right. What, what do you want to say, Mr. Reed, Ms. Ms. Cleveland? Uh, Judge, I have nothing else to say. Thank you. I, I have nothing, Judge. You see my face, right? I see your face, Judge. I, I have nothing else to add, Judge. Thank you. All right. Ms. Cleveland, anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Um, I'll have another discussion with Ms. Russell after court, and I'll make sure that it's very clear all the things that you discussed today and the expectations going forward. All right, thank you. Mr. Fikens. Uh oh, you're muted, Mr. Fikens. Nothing else, Your Honor, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, and so Ms. Russell, I, I did hear about your accident. I heard that you had to have surgery. I hope that you are taking good care of yourself. Um, taking other people's medicine is not taking good care of yourself, though. I, I need you to make sure you're following up with your doctor and all of those good things. You, you were in a car accident? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so I hope that your aunt is getting better. I really hope so. Um, I think that this time of being sobriety, you probably being sober, you needed more now than you've ever needed it before. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. What have you learned so far? Just to, outside of anything, or personal things that's going on, stay on top of the things that you have to do, because in the in the bigger picture, this is what's going to, you know, have a better outcome on your life and the things that you're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. 
Did you also learn you better not take nobody's medication? And I better not take nobody's medication either. Yeah, you go. There you go. That's what I need you to learn. You better not. All right. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're in one piece. I, I need you to get, let's get back to that doctor, Miss Cleveland, circle back to me. Let me know that she went to the doctor and I want to know, you know, how that turned out and be honest with your doctor. Tell them if it's not working, but, right. <clears throat> but you can't take a narcotic. Okay. And there's a reason for that because we don't want people to uh, go transfer from one substance use to another. Okay. No, totally and so, but but there are some other ways. Okay. I don't, I don't do narcotics, even after surgery, pain. I don't. And yeah. you know, I, I just don't because it's, it's too much of an addictive thing. And so right. I err exactly. on the side of caution. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Miss Cleveland. Yes, I'm having your client come back on. I'm going to do January 22nd, 2021. And I'll do 8.30 a.m. Okay. Thank you. All right, if nothing else. All right, let's do it, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Russell. Okay, thank you, Ms. All right, very good. Okay. I am ready on. Uh, is that from Wayne County Jail Division? Yeah, let me do Wayne County Jail Division. Morning, I need to sir. grab a file. I'm sorry. Good morning. This is Wayne County Jail, oh, Jail, Jail Division 3. Yes, ma'am. Good morning to you. I'm about to call that case right now. Thank you all for joining okay. us. I appreciate you getting this chill cut before me. Thank you. No all right. I am ready on the following. I have let me make sure I just have two cases, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you. I have case number 1904446901 and 1904531301 for Tatiana Chilcut. Miss Chilcut, state your name for the record. Tatiana Chilcut. All right, Ms. Chilcutt, you are in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Chilcutt, why are you at the Wayne County Jail? I had a domestic dispute with my kid's father on Thursday, last Thursday evening. It was basically like a sexual, he was making sexual advances and I didn't want to be part of it, so he was choking me, and I, I ain't gonna Okay, no, 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 don't out. tell me any more facts about the case, because you, I don't know if you've, you've been charged or whatever, but- No, no, I haven't been. I, I don't know what the problem is, but here's my problem. Miss Chilcott, you keep ending up in jail. Yes. You keep in ending up in situations that result in police involvement, and you end up either beat up, or in jail. How many times have we done this? Uh, this is like the third time. Well, it is. Second, yeah. It well, is. They, when the detectives uh, came and talked to me, like when, that, when the police, I'm the one that called the police. And when the police arrived, he was outside and he talked to them. They didn't even talk to me. They He just told them I was on tether for felonious assault. And they just arrested me. And I had to wait to talk to the detectives. And when the detectives talked to me and found out everything that was going on, then no charges was brought up. But I had a, of course, it was police contact. So they, the tether um, agent violated me. But then I went to court uh, yesterday and they said technically it's not a violation because it was basically false uh, report on his end. Mr. Fike is Mr. Reed. Somebody want to go in the breakout room with Miss with Miss Chilcut because she's missing my my whole point. She she's missing it. Your Honor, if what Mr. I Mr. Fike is your muted. I I'll go in with the judge. Your Honor, okay. will I be able to join in the breakout room? Uh, yes, and then when they need to talk confidentially, uh, Miss Robs, you'll have to come back to the courtroom. Okay. All right, Mr. Fikas, I see you shaking your head. What you want to tell me? 
I just I, I I'm I'm happy to go in the breakout room as well, Judge, or or instead of Mr. Reed. But if Mr. Reed wants to go, it's fine. I uh, this has happened so many times that uh, I'm I'm happy to go in there. Okay. Um. Mr. Reed, you want to go or are you sending Mr. Fikins? I'll go in, Judge. No, he's, he's volunteering All right. to talk, Judge. I, I, I'll take that. All right. Very good. And so then I need, wait, let me do this. Don't don't do it. Don't 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 make any comments. Don't do it. All right. You both should receive an invitation to go to breakout room number two. Please yes. accept it. Oh, and Miss Robs, you wanted to go as well. This is this is breakout number three. Number three. I'm sorry. It is number three. All right, Miss Robs, and then you'll come back. When she All needs right. to speak with her attorney without All you. Right. All right. Very good. Um, are we ready on Ms. Larson? Yes, yes Your Honor. All right. I have the following matter for Vita Lost Larson. I have case number two zero zero five 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 one zero one. Miss, let me make sure it's right. Yes, Miss Larson, state your full name, please. Hi, Judge Holmes. Vital Larson. All right, Miss Larson, you are in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom? Yes, ma'am. All right. Ms. Larson, we have some issues. Ms. Larson, did you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right, M Mr. Fikes, did you go in the breakout room with Ms. Larson? I, I didn't, but I, I, I don't think I need to judge. I, I'm well aware of the situation. Um, and I, I will say to, and if she wants to go in a breakout room, I will do it. But more importantly, Ms. Larson, um, I, I can see it on your face. I can yeah. see how you are different. You know, I, you hardly need to test because I see it on you. What a beautiful person you've been. What a beautiful person you are. And yet it takes you down every once in a while. And I'm sad about that. So if you want to go in the breakout room, uh, Ms. Larson, I will go in the breakout room with you. But otherwise, I uh, that that roadmap is is right on your face. It, it certainly is, and I could not have said it better, Mr. Fikins. Miss Larson, when you use it, doesn't look good on you at all. You were coming, you were doing so well, you looked good, you were feeling good. Um, what I do want to applaud you for, Miss Larson, is that you were honest with Miss Cleveland when she called you with those test results. You were honest and you said to her, you had gotten yourself in a situation and went somewhere and, you know, and you encountered some people that use and you used with them. And so I applaud you for your honesty because that puts us in a situation where we can help you. But we've got to figure this out, Ms. Larson. We've got to figure it out. And, and you're going to really have to do some soul searching as to how do I always end up here? Who are the people that I associate when I, with when I end up here? What are some of the things that I do when I end up in this place? What are some phone calls that I'm making when I end up in this place? What kind of feelings am I having when I end up in this place? What's going on around me when I end up in this place? Those are questions that you are going to have to answer and you are really going to have to be honest with yourself about how, what measures can I put in place 
to prevent these things? Are there people I need to cut off? Are there numbers I need to delete? Are there individuals I need to stop talking to? Um, are there some coping skills that I need to learn so that when certain situations happen, this is not my first response is to go and use. Only you can do that. I can only order you to do things so far. The, the rest is really up to you. And I appreciate and applaud Ms. Cleveland for making sure that you got on the 1-800 number, that you were reassessed. It's my understanding that Ms. Larson is going to go to inpatient treatment on this Friday. Um, she's to continue to test until she goes into inpatient treatment. She's gonna go this Friday. And so, um, Ms. Larson, I need you to work the program for you. What do you want to tell me? You know, my mom had passed away December 28th and I came to my sister's house and I thought I could handle it, but apparently I couldn't. Um, it was just, I went down that road. I went down that sad, lonely road and I just was missing my mom. And, and, you're and I understand so that. I was going to. You're breaking up, Miss Larson. Mm -mm. And I was going to testing and I was going to counseling and I was doing the right thing and I was going on my job and me and my daughter and the kids had a great Christmas. And then after that, I just, you know, without my mom, I don't know. There's but, no but Miss Larson. Ms. Larson, why didn't you pick up the phone and call your case manager or your counselor or drop into the courtroom? I mean, we were still, uh, the, the sign was up and I was still listening at least until uh, they booted me out an hour after I'd log on. And so there were so many things that you could have done. Look, I, I get it, missing your mom. My mom is gone. This is my second Christmas without her, um, but I honor her. I, I honor her when I miss her. I don't right. do things to dishonor her when I miss her. I, was I do things to honor her. Right. And I was honoring her by doing the right thing and everything. And it just got to be too much. All right. I Mr. Feigen. Sorry. I, I just want to say, Miss Larson, first of all, I lost two parents. I lost both my mom and dad. It's terrible. It's not wonderful. There's nothing good about it, but you gotta learn the skills to get over that. And, and I thought I had the coping skills, I uh, did. You, well, you, you didn't, quite honestly, you didn't have the skills. And not that they're not available, they are available to you and you can learn them, but you need to learn them. And, you know, I when I said that, initially about I, I i could tell you were using just by your face you are a beautiful person uh and uh, uh be very brutally honest you're less beautiful when you're using yes um, i know you have a lot of potential that you need to use and you got to give yourself credit for what you are losing a parent lose certainly losing a mom is very tragic i get it We've lost moms. Both the judge and I have lost moms. Okay, and uh, you know Jesse lost his mom. Uh, I, I, you know, of course it's an unreplaceable loss, but it can't be the road. Then the next step is well, now I got to use again. Um, as tough as that is, and as hard as that is, you have to come up with a skill to get around that. You need to do that. Yes. Um, Your Honor, I've said enough. I'm, I'm... No, you're absolutely right, Mr. Fikens. You're absolutely right. And, and Ms. Larson, I, I want you to understand that we see the value in you. We do. And, and we want you to beat this. And you can. You can do it. You can do it. I thought I was. But you, and, and you were, you were. So let's get back on track. 
I jumped all okay. in and I was doing it. I was doing this. You're breaking up. And I was, I was just doing She's breaking up, Miss Cleveland. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, Miss Cleveland, I need Ms. Larson to continue to test. Um, she's going in on Friday. Is that tomorrow, right? At 10 a.m., yes, I'll Your Honor. All right. I'll need you to circle back to me and tell me again, where's that inpatient treatment? It's Odyssey House in Flint. Um, inpatient, 28 days. You said in Flint? In Flint. Yes, Your Honor. Um, she's through going through Genesee County. All right. Very good. I'm going to get the skills that I need this time. I'm going to get them. And work, we're here to work with you. We're here to work with you. We mean that, Ms. Larson. Mr. Fikens? I just want to say, do it for yourself. Do it for you, not for us. Do it for you. It's important. Oh, no, do I was doing you. it before for me. Yeah, but I, I know, but, but when life always happens, emergencies always occur. They always do. They always occur at the worst possible time that you ever want. And I thought an I could handle it. I really did. Well, that's good. And now you understand that you don't. So learn the skills that, that will take you to the next level. Okay? Okay? She might be frozen. Thank you. She's frozen again. Okay. All right. So, Miss Cleveland, circle back with me tomorrow. She has to be in inpatient treatment or a warrant is going to go out for her arrest. I'm going to do a return to court date. I'm actually going to push it out a little bit, Miss Cleveland. I'm going to... Wait a minute. We're on the seven. I'm going to put her on January 28th. Let's see how she's doing then. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and see if you can coordinate with the facility. We'll do January 28th, 2021, and I will put her on for 9.30 a.m. And so make sure, Ms. Cleveland, that you express to the facility if, there's, if that's a time that she should be in class or something, we will make adjustments in the time because it's important for her to get all of her, her treatment time in. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And um, Ms. Larson, I do want to extend my condolences. Um, I did not know you had a loss in your family. I apologize um, um, that I did not recognize that sooner. Also, um, if you could just sign a release when you get to Odyssey House so they can begin talking to me immediately, um, that will really mm -hmm. make this um, an, an easier process um, for the court to coordinate with your um treatment provider. Sure, I'll do that, Ms. Cleveland. Thank you, Ms. Larson. And it was for 28 days? Um, it should be for 28 days, but, um, you know, it's going to just depend on your progress in the program. Right, right. Oh, no, I'm going to get it right this time. All right, let's work hard. All right, Ms. Larson, I'm glad you're here. Hang in there. You know you don't have to wait three weeks if you need to speak with the court or with Ms. Cleveland. Mm -hmm. We are available to you, okay? Thank you, Miss Judge. Judge. All right, very good. All right, take care. Thank Was you. that Ms. Viola right. Larson, Judge? Y yes, that's Miss Larson. I was saying that Miss Larson re reminds me of Orlando, of Griffin Orlando. I know, they do. I knew that's who you were talking about. <laughs> yes. Griffin, Orlando. Griffin Orlando. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. They look alike. All right, Miss Larson. Good to see that smile. It is. Take care of yourself. Be good Thank to yourself, okay? I was trying. You deserve it. Yeah, I know you deserve it. Let's try again. All right, very good. Thank you. Yes, you do. All right, take care. All right, Bye -bye. let's go back to Miss Chilcott. Thank you, Ms. Cleveland. We are back on the record uh, with Tatiana Chilcutt. Um, case numbers are 1904446901, 1904531301 for Tatiana Chilcutt. 
Mr. Reed, what do you want to tell me about Ms. Chilcutt? Judge, um, Ms. Chilcutt is in custody, as the court knows. She's been in custody for seven days. Um, she, did, she did admit that uh, she did have a drink on New Year's, and that may have precipitated her legal problems. Um, however, she has been in custody for seven days, and she still remains employed at Chrysler. Uh, I'm asking the court to take her honesty into consideration and um, give her credit for the seven days she served so that she can return to work. Ms. Chill, Ms. 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 Rives, what do you want to tell me? Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you, Your Honor. I um I had the opportunity to speak to uh, Ms. Chilcutt's godmother, Ms. Uh, Ebony Andrews, and who actually informed me that Ms. Chilcutt was incarcerated. Uh, she stated to me, Your Honor, that on that night, Wednesday, well Thursday morning at approximately three a.m. Uh, Ms. Chilcutt was engaging, she was actually drinking, and that she uh, began to uh, pull on her daughter Ava's hair. Um, and the father, in, in the midst of that, um, intervened, and that's when the physical altercation took place. Um, Ms. Chilcutt, Your Honor, has been before you, I believe this is her third time, um, incarcerated due to uh, some type of physical altercation. Ms. Chilka, Your Honor, has been in a program since uh, April 16, 2019. Um, we've tried multiple things with Ms. Chilka. She's in therapy. I've reached out to Ms. Chilka. Ms. Chilka reaches out to me. I make myself available. Um, she's working, Your Honor. She's doing well, but Ms. Chilka spirals and she continues to go back to drinking um my recommendation your honor at this time is for miss chilka to maintain uh at dickerson for another seven days okay any response to that um, judge i had placed my my recommendation she has been in custody seven days um she is employed. Her job is still available. She says that she, her seven days has given her more insight. She has a plan. Um, she would like to give that plan to the court. But I'm asking the court to uh, take into consideration the fact that she was honest about consuming alcohol and she has been in custody seven days. And your honor, if I might say something, I, you know, we've dealt with Ms. Chilcutt a long time. Yeah, uh, I think anger management has been a real problem with her. Um, and and when the levels uh, when drinking takes over, anger management becomes out of control for Miss Chilcutt. Um, I've talked to her many times. Mr. Reed has talked to her many times. Um, I want her to stay in the program, Judge. Uh, but she's got to she's got to come to some awareness of what gets her in trouble all the time. And right now, it's just I, I'm I'm saddened to see that she just hasn't come to that. So uh, I don't recommend any more jail time. I like I like that she had that job, and I hope she still has it. I hope that she can be a productive member of society. But she's got to figure that out. For I don't know how else we can help her on that. Either more anger management or more. Uh, more therapy or more treatment. I just hope that she wouldn't, whenever a problem exists, she goes back to the bottle and, and there's no reason for it. That's and just makes poor choices, just poor choices. And, and quite frankly, Mr. Feigens, I don't know that jail really helps Miss, Miss uh, Chilcutt because she's been to jail before. Oh, she can do it. She can do it on her head. She yes. can do jail. She just did seven days. Yep. I agree. And so I'm not certain that jail really helps her. So, uh, Miss Chilcutt, what's the problem? Now, you came on telling me all this stuff about some sexual advances. And, and then we hear another side of the story about you pulling somebody's hair or what have you. Then I hear another side of the story. 
that you were drinking, which may have led you to make make some poor decisions and some poor choices. Come on, Miss Chilka, when are you gonna get this together? And you always come before me with that song and dance about you got a plan, you gonna do this, you, you're doing this, I'm gonna try that. And then you get out and you know, and you're always in these fights. I, this is what I don't understand about somebody's mama. You are somebody's mother. Hold your head up so I can see you. You are somebody's mother. You are a young lady. You're not an animal. Every time I turn around, you're out there fighting. It's not cute. You're too old for that. Your kids are looking at you. You're setting a horrible example. So what do you want to do? Because the way I'm feeling, Mr. Feigens, I don't want to give up on Miss Jill Cut. I don't think that jail helps her. But I'm really, I'm at the point where I want to leave her there for 30 days to, to just, you know, just leave her there where she'll be safe and nobody's popping her in the mouth. Because she always get popped in the mouth. What, what I hope what, Ms. I didn't ever have I didn't never actually have a plan before, but I talked to my god mom, the one, and I told her, even if I bug you or get whenever I have an urge to drink, I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you. Just don't let it get on your nerves by me calling you no matter what time it is. And I talked to my mom about it. I never had that plan. That's my plan to call her and talk to her whenever I get an urge to, so we can talk about it and remind me of what I don't want to do and why I don't want to be here and everything that I have to lose. But Ms. Chilcutt, if, if, if I might interrupt, Judge. Go ahead. Ms. Chilcutt, you have an urge to fight. You have an urge to get into altercations with people. And I don't understand it. Uh, you know, I mean- and you go to jail. Everybody else goes home. That, that, that's what I don't understand. Man, I don't get that. That you put yourself in a position that you are always the person that the cops take to jail. And I don't understand it. And I, and I want to understand it because I think you are a good person underneath all, all this stuff. I think you're a good person, but it doesn't come out that way. And it always comes out that you are you are the one taken to jail. You are the one who get beat up and then taken to jail. That's what I see, and I don't understand that. Your Honor, if I could, um, I think something I don't understand, and maybe I'm being naive or something, but it, it, it seems like it would help, unless Ms. Chilcutt is having these feelings and running to the store, it, it seems like it would be great if there was just no alcohol in her dwelling. So it's not so easy to get upset and go in the cabinet or whatever. And I don't know if she's driving or walking to the store, but usually, you know, I don't know, at 3 a.m., maybe it's already in the house. Maybe it, 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 she should work on it not being in the dwelling. Agree with that, Mr. Yancey. I, uh, I definitely agree with that. I, you know, I, I your Honor, if I may for, for one second. Yes, yes, please um, do. Your Honor, um, is, it, is it possible to also uh, staff Ms. Chilcutt's case today for further um, for further clarity, uh, information, um, to possibly come up with a, an additional plan for Ms. Chilcutt um, so that we can see what direction to go as a team just to, to see what would be the best plan for Ms. Chilcutt. Because again, as, as, as it's been stated, Your Honor, Ms. Chilcutt does have the ability to do well. She has the ability to go get good jobs. She uh, maintains, she does really well. She follows up, she tests, but it's just the, the it's the, the, the challenges that Ms. Chilka continues to go back and use and has these physical altercations and and, and, do. and I would like, Your Honor, if possible, to make that recommendation that we staff her today 
to try to find an alternative solution other than jail because as you stated your honor she can do jail she can definitely do jail with her eyes closed i believe um and if we can just come together for a resolution uh miss chilcutt um it's unfortunate because her 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 godmom did say that right now she can't see her children she has her children due to the incident so um maybe the possibility of some some more treatment um so so who has the children miss robs miss uh miss ebony andrews her god miss chilcutt's godmom actually has the children and so you said that miss chilcutt cannot see the children Yes, Your Honor. According to Miss Andrews, at this time she can't do to. Is that according to CPS or Miss Andrews just doesn't want to deal with Miss Chilcutt? No, Miss uh, Miss Chil Miss Miss Andrews does want to deal. She she was advocating for Miss Chilcutt, but because of the there is a CPS involvement and with Miss Chilcutt, um, and the interaction that Miss Chilcutt had with Ava, her oldest daughter, um, she can't interact with them at this time. And to further investigation. This is amazing. All right. Ms. Chilcutt, are you still there? You're frozen on my screen. Are you still there? Yes. And, and Your Honor, I'm if here. I might say, Ms. Chilcutt, the problem isn't the, the, the problems you have with children, because we all have problems with children. It's that once the police arrive, you must have some problems with them because you keep getting arrested. And and, and that's, that's a problem. That's a problem that I can't get over. And I want you to understand that your children come first. Your sobriety, well, actually your sobriety comes first, but your children do, are, are very important. I know they're important to you. And, and, and it seems like when, when, and I've been an attorney for 40 years, so I've seen a lot of domestic violence cases. And I see where the mothers get involved and they, just can't stop themselves and I hope that you learn that you can stop yourself and that you can stop being violent with your children with the police officers and everybody else you can do it you can stop drinking you can do this and because I truly mean this you are a beautiful beautiful person I see so much good in you that I hope that you understand how good you are that you can be good to your children that you can be good to the police officers, that you can tolerate that, the, the problems and, and the confrontations that we have in life. We all have emergencies in our lives. We do. If you think you're the only one, you're wrong. We all do. The judge has emergencies in her life. The judge has problems in her life. I have problems in my life. We do. And it's how we deal with them. That's the important part. Not that we have them, because we all have them, and you do too. Do. But it's how you deal with them. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, 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 no, no, you're you're absolutely right. Because Mr. Vikings, Miss Robs, Miss Reed, I have hit a brick wall. I, I really have. Um, I really have. And so I, I wrote down a couple of things just as I'm listening. Uh, Miss Robs, you and I talked in depth the other day about. There always seems to be an altercation, or at least two now out of the three altercations surrounding Ava, the daughter. Yes, yeah, sure. And we talked about pointing Miss Chilcutt in the direction to get some assistance so that she is able to work with Ava in a safe and healthy and productive environment that yeah. will require some tough love. And so I want to make sure that you share those things with Ms. Chilcutt um, because we were supposed to, you were supposed to do it on her court date, which was the other day, and then she didn't show up. We didn't know she was in jail. And so um, I, I'd still like you to do that. The other thing is I need Ms. Chilcutt to get on the 1-800 number again to be reassessed. Um, I do think she needs anger management. Um she may need to even go back to outpatient treatment. And so those are things I, I want to do, do it from that approach. Let's try again to get her some counseling and some therapy and some anger management 
to uh, address her issue and then to point her in the right direction for, uh, for handling the situation with Ava because I, Ms. Ms. Rob shared a couple of things. And so, and I understand it can be a tough balancing act, but right now, Ms. Ms. Chilka, the, the scales are not in your, tilted in your favor. Um, you're just not making good decisions. And, and it would be different if you weren't drinking or you weren't using a substance that I could say, okay, I understand how she got here, but now you've added something to the issue. And so you're not making good decisions. I, I'm i struggling with whether or not to leave her in jail. And, and judge, all I would ask is, I, uh, you know, that there's that song, I'm giving up on you. I don't know if you heard that one, but Miss Chilcutt, we don't want to give up on you. But, we don't. But, but but you're giving up on you, and you got to stop doing it. Judge, I would ask that she be released from jail, that she goes back to her job, that she gives it one more time. But I, you know, and then, you know, as as you say sometimes, maybe we got to break up. Maybe we got to break up. Um, and, I'd like yeah. not to break up with you. Miss Miss Robs, give me that godmother's name again. Who has the children? Yes, Sharana, it's Ebony Andrews. All right, Ebony Andrews. All right, this is what I'm, I'm going to try again. I, I'm going to try again. But, but Ms. Chilcutt, let, let me just say this to you. All this fighting you're doing, something really bad is going to end up happening. You're going to end up getting hurt, which you've gotten hurt several times in the past. You're going to end up getting hurt or you're going to end up hurting someone. And you still, either way, you're going to end up in jail or in the morgue. And right now, the way the statistics look, the odds look, you're going to end up being the one that gets the worst end of the deal. Because you always do. Everybody else go home, you go to jail. I haven't seen nobody else's black eyes, knots on their face. I haven't seen yours. And so if you are keeping an inventory, because I keep an inventory of the things I do well so that I don't get enticed to venture off into things that I don't do well, things that I mess up, that I jack up. I need you to scratch fighting off of your list of things you do well. You don't do that well. You don't fight well. You're not a good fighter. First of all, you lose both ways. You lose physically, and then you go to jail. Take fighting off your list. Let's find something else good that you, are, you do well and put that on the list. Because fighting is not your strength. You're not a good fighter. You keep getting your butt whipped and you keep going to jail. Not a good fighter to me. Just not a good fighter. Because at least if I'm going to be sitting in jail, I'm going to be sitting in jail talking about I whipped everybody's ass. That, I'm sorry, everybody's butt. That's why I'm in jail. I whipped everybody's butt. But you go to jail and you're the one beat up. Take it off your list. It's the drinking, Your okay. Honor. It, that, I just need to stop. That's my whole problem. Well, drinking. you shouldn't be drinking it's anyways. Drinking. You shouldn't be drinking. So that's why I want you to get back on the 800 number. I need her to get back in counseling. I need the anger management. I'm, I'm entering a no contact order with Ebony Andrews. I'm going to reduce her bond to a $500 personal bond Thank with you, no man. contact with Ebony Andrews. And I'm going to see her back on January 21st, 2021 at 8.30 a.m. And let me say this to you. Put your hand down. I'll let you speak to me in a second. Let me say this to you. If Miss Robs gets a call saying that you went to Ebony Andrews' house and ran off at the mouth, I don't care if they knock all your teeth out. You're going to take your no teeth self to the Wayne County Jail and you're going to be there for 60 days. Did everybody hear what I just said? I said 60 days because I've already indicated that there is a no contact order. No oh, contact goodness. with Ebony Andrews and those children. You've got oh, to go goodness. through the CPS piece of it. Do that. No objection. All right. What do you want to say? Thank you, Mr. Fikes. What do you want to say, Miss Chilcott? I was just wondering, 
uh, why you order no contact with her? That's that's my supposed to be my plan, my safety to because those kids are there and you are not to have contact with those children. That's why. No, the CPS never said that. I talked to Ms. Owen. Ma'am, let me tell you I this right here. Ms. Let me say this to you. You're not in a position to bargain with me right now. You are in jail, okay, because of your doing. Don't bargain with me. No contact with Ebony Andrews. None. None. We'll look at it when you come back in two weeks. You're going to take two weeks to get your life together, okay? What is it, Ms. Chilka? I have to... I was just saying the CPS told me I have to work with her to get the the kids back and forth to school and around that. I have to I have to work with her. That's and I'm CPS saying told no. Me when I was on the phone. And I'm saying no. Miss Robs, talk to Miss Andrews. Let her know that I have entered a no contact order. And the rationale is I need two weeks for Miss Chilcut to breathe to step back, to get in line with all the things that the court is ordering her to do and tell her while I apologize, if we have a bus pass or whatever that Miss Miss Andrews can use to help get the kids back and forth to where they need to go, hell, we're in COVID. Nobody's going back and forth. And so look, whatever we need to do, but you, Miss Chilcutt, will not have contact with Miss Andrews. Bottom line. No objection. Bottom man. line. Thank you. All right, Ms. Chilka, I'm, I'm putting in my notes. Failure to comply with my order equals 60 days in the Wayne County Jail. No questions asked. No questions asked. You're going to go to jail for 60 days. No, no, no. How long is the no contact order, Ms. Holmes? Miss Chilcutt, I just told you I need two weeks. We will talk about it when you come back to court in two weeks. Oh, okay. I didn't understand that part. All right. Judge, may, Judge, Anything? May, I say, may I say something, please? I talk when I talk to Miss Chilcutt, I indicated to you that your problem is sometimes associating with people. Right now, you should be concerned about drug treatment court and work. Drug treatment court and work. Do the program and go to Chrysler. That's what you should be concerned about. Thank you, Judge. And, and I agree with that, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Ms. Robs, work your magic. Yes, J January 21st, 2021 at 8.30 is the next time I'll see Ms. Chilcutt and I'll address the no contact order at that time. Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Ms. Chilcutt, ball's in your court, okay? Yes, thank you, Your Honor, for not giving up on me. I know you're tired. I know. I'm sorry. Why? You can tell by the look on my face I'm tired. I just know, yes, I know. But God placed it on your heart not to give up, and I'm thankful and appreciative of that. I'm not giving up. I'm the last person on your list you need to worry about giving up. Let me tell you that. I'm the last person. My concern is I need you to not give up. That's right. I need you to not give up on you. Because no matter how much I'm cheering you on and rooting for you, if you give up, guess what? You lose. You lose. So come on, Miss Chilcutt. Let's do it. Let's yes, do it. All right. Get out of jail. Do what you need to do. Get back to work. Get on that 1-800 number today. I need that done today, Miss Robs. All yes, right. Bye, Miss Chilcutt. Get the order ready. All right. I need to go through the remaining things on my docket. I I have uh, Miss Hammonds. I saw her on Mr. Yancey. Where's Miss Hammonds? She's on. Okay. I don't see her. All right. I also have a Tanisha Lindsay case number U two five eight four four nine one five who was charged with failure to have a group card. It was for an arraignment on the bench warrant. She has failed to appear in my courtroom. I've not seen anyone extra. And so KPS will issue and that bond will be set at $500 cash assurity. Did she post a bond to get that this court date? So just find that out for me. 
And then the last thing I have on my, no, I have two things. Uh, I have case number 2005-698-501 for Lawrence Reed. Lawrence Reed, he was scheduled for sentencing. I have no idea who that is or what that is. So I'll need an ROA. Does anybody know what that is? I think he's kin to Mr. Reed, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Reed, can you tell us what your relative was going to be here for? I mean, we got to lighten up somewhere, right? I deny that. I deny that. I do not know that gentleman. He's not related to me. <laughs> All right. Let me look. Mr. Mr. Morgan will look at it and let me know. He has not showed up in uh, my courtroom. And so, and he's here on continued substance use. So, and then the last matter that I have is U534455519 for Christy Zacker. For Christy Zacker, who has Ms. Zacker's case? Miss Robs. Robs? <clears throat> Can somebody call Miss Robs? I need to know where Miss Zacker is. I don't know what Where is Mr. Johnson? He's on there. He's on there. His camera is off. There he is. He's back. All right, I'll, I'll do him. I Give me a second. Um, so, Mr. This Mr. Reed case. Uh, he must be a new contract. Yeah. New contract? Is this a felony? So, this Mr. Reed, right? Yeah, this was a felony. Yeah, look oh, at it. They claim that they sent him to us, but we never even talked to this guy. Mm -mm. And he wouldn't be scheduled for sentencing with me. Mm -mm. And it says from Judge Giles. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm on it. Let's call him uh, see what's going on. But he was given a date for today's date. But we need to let Judge Giles know that they can't put people on my docket. And we nobody's contacted me. So, I mean, he didn't show up. And so I am going to issue a KPS for Lawrence Reed, case number 2005698501. And I'm going to do that KPS at $5,000 cash assurity. This was a felony. He doesn't get to just walk away from this. But Mr. Morgan, I need you to circle back to me. I need to find out why they didn't notify you or anybody else. Uh, that um, this gentleman was even in the pipe. They can't do that. They cannot do that. All right. And then what happened with Ms. Zacker? Um, I'm trying to find out now, Judge. Okay, find out on Ms. Zacker. And I got Pollard too, Oh, oh. Where's Mr. Pollard? I'm sorry, Judge. That was the error. He should not be on the dock. He's in warrant status. Okay, Mr. Pollard is in warrant status. I skipped him. Okay. Yep, he is in warrant status. Wonderful. And so, you all will find out about Ms. Zacker and then about Mr. Johnson. He was on before Ms. Hammonds. And so, let me call Mr. Johnson's case. I just want to get, I do a. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'm ready to call Mr. Johnson's case. I have, and Mr. Johnson should be an add on to my docket. Mr. Drew. He's on your docket. I think he's on your docket, Judge. Is he? No, he's in warrant status. Right. So add Nolan Johnson to my docket. I have the following cases. I have Z8066861 and Z8067991. Mr. Johnson, state your full name for the record. Nolan Johnson. All right, Mr. Johnson, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing today by way of Zoom? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Johnson, I did have a few words with you. Um, before you went into a breakout room, Mr. Griffin, I'll go ahead and start with you. Ms. Drew, I'll have you adjust the camera. I'm going to be seated. All right, let's do it. 
Okay, now here's uh, Lama Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson signed this contract with us on record 2120. Uh, he has a 24 month contract. Uh, initially, um, I have been trying to make, um, I explained to you what was going on with Mr. Johnson, so you can talk to the get in contact with him and have him come on on uh, Twitter. I uh, texted him, tried to call him, whatever, unable to get in contact with him. So he did come uh, get on. So a warrant was issued. Um, after that, I did have a conversation with him. Uh, he informed to me that he had lost his cell phone. Uh, his cousin actually called me uh, the day of course that he found his cell phone under the seat of his car or something. Yeah, that's little children excuses. You're a grown man. Let's act like one. So just getting back to it, Mr. Johnson picked up a ticket for driving. Um, The next day after court, he picked up a ticket for driving, so he got a ticket. I don't know if it hit the system or not yet. I don't think it has. Check for me, Mr. True. Yeah. Uh, No, Mr. Johnson, he picked up a a ticket for no uh, operating permit. So uh, it's probably not in the system. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah, with Johnson. And um, so I was having uh, problems getting in contact with Mr. Johnson. So I have since had contact. Um, he since have I started testing and he did a lot of outpatient treatment. But I, I explained to Mr. Johnson, excuses is not going to be tolerated in this program. So he clearly understand. I said, it's no excuses. Um, you know, we got people who have jobs and everything, and they find a way to make things happen. And this problem is uh, not driving. And I told him, um, you cannot drive without a license. And Program just all around it. So he did have those concerns and things like that. But like I told him, uh, look at his plea agreement and everything. His plea agreement is on two drunk driving cases that successful completion of drug treatment course for the deal goes away. So um, I know Mr. Python went in and talked to him or whatever. He told me he wants to do the program. I told him willing to work with him, but he it's no excuses. I can't, I'm not gonna go back and forth with him and I explain that to him. So either he wants to do the program or he doesn't. So that's my message. Right. All right, so who went in the breakout room attorney wise with Mr. Johnson? I did, Your Honor. And okay, Mr. Pikins. Thank you, Your Honor. And thank you for the opportunity of uh, letting me speak to my client uh, in the breakout room. Um, first of all, he does, uh, and I appreciate when people take responsibility for their actions, even when they aren't doing the correct path, uh, at least when you take responsibility, you are acknowledging that there is a problem that you need to overcome and you need to work on. Um, and, and he, Mr. Johnson, I think understands that, um, you know, I told him what I knew you, you are going to say to him. Uh, and that is, I'll pa- paraphrase, but you know, when we're trying to help you, you can't go out there breaking the law. That's just the bottom line of the whole thing. Um, I hope he gets that. I think he does. I think he's new enough to the program to start working on that, that he needs to understand how you can't break the law. The events of last night has told me how you can't break the law and, and, and continue to be president or anything else. I'm sorry I'm being political at this moment, but you got to follow the law. You just got to do it. And, and we're trying to help you. And you got to follow the law. And and I think he understands that, Judge. I hope he does. Um, we, we certainly admit to all the allegations that are being brought up by Mr. Griffin. And, uh, you know, we, we, we I, he needs some guidance in this. And and we will accept anything the court wishes to, to impose. All right. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, what's your deal? What you want to tell me? Um, I mean, my deal is just, you know, getting used to everything, just get acclimated with the whole program. I mean, I understand I shouldn't have been driving. I know that tough times get rough sometimes, and I understand I got to find other solutions to figure things out. And I understand, like, what I did. I shouldn't have drove, period. And I'll just take Ms. Mr. Johnson, do you do you understand that you have two drinking and driving related offenses? Yes, ma'am. So you don't deserve a license right now. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. It's not fair to all of the folks in Detroit and everywhere else in the world who drive responsibly for you to have a license right now. 
Right now, you're in a holding pattern to get yourself together, to learn about yourself, to learn some, some tools that you can use so that drinking does not impair your ability to make good decisions. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> All right, you are 36 years old, Mr. Johnson. Now, I had some conversation outside of court with Mr. Mr. Uh, Griffin about some of the excuses that you were giving as to why you hadn't signed up for uh, treatment, why you had not been tested, why you weren't doing calling him back and all of these things. Let me be very clear, Mr. Johnson. I am not accepting any excuses. At 36 years old, you are a grown man and you do the things that are important to you. You make the sacrifices that you want to make. Either you are going to make the sacrifices in this program and work it, or you are going to go to jail. Do you understand me? Yes. I'm not going to coddle you. I am not, I don't feel sorry for you. I do want to help you, but you are going to have to help yourself. Do you understand that? Yes. So the next time Mr. Griffin comes to me about your phone under the seat in a car, about you you didn't know, you didn't, wasn't sure if your license was good and all of that, understand you're going to jail. Do you understand that? Yes. I, I want to be very, very clear. Do not drive. You don't have a driver's license. You don't deserve one right now. Do not drive drive. You got to make it work. You got to get to where you're going however you can get there, but not behind the wheel of a car or any motorized vehicle, any motorized apparatus, because the next time you have police contact, you're going to have jail contact. Do you understand that? Yes. How can we help you, Mr. Johnson? What do you need us to do to help you? Only thing I need help with right now is an excuse for, my, for missing school today because I had an exam today to do. No, I couldn't. Blow. You're in school where? You're in a tech program, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, if you don't make some better decisions, you're going to miss a lot of school. I need you to care about school first. I'm going to care about school second. Because right now I care about sobriety first. I've been dropping Ms. clean. Drew, I'm sorry. I've been dropping clean. I ain't been drinking or doing nothing. No marijuana, no illegal drugs, nothing. And I've been and I've been testing. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. But you have some other things that you need to do, Mr. Johnson. That's wonderful. Good, but I need you to follow all of the mandates of the program, okay? Yes, ma'am. I understand, Your Honor. Miss Miss Drew, yes. you have that sheet, Mr. Griffin, where it'll indicate that he was in court, and if you could get it and right. and PDF it to him, yes, we'll get you something for today for school, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, because I want you to finish. I want you to finish that program, but I need you to want to finish it, okay? Yes. Sir. All right. Anything else, Mr. Johnson? No, man. That's it. I have nothing to say. Okay, Mr. Griffin. Uh, nothing else, Your Honor. Um, I just want to talk. Like, each time you get caught driving, you actually push your license back almost a full year. So, put yourself in a worse situation. I mean, uh, doing that correctly. You know, you probably wouldn't eligible for a license, but with that ticket, it actually pushes you back almost a full year. So the benefits is not worth it. So. Did you hear that, Mr. Johnson? Yes, man. I don't. I don't have a problem. I don't even drink like that, so it's fine. I, I don't. I'm sober. I'm cool. I'm good with that. I'm just being focused. No, you on... didn't hear what Mr. Griffin just said. I can't hear him. You missed. I'm talking fire to your driver's license. I say, each time you get pulled over and caught without a license with the Secretary of State, it actually pushes you back like a year or two. To the eligibility to even get your license back, so you probably can't even get a restricted license to the program because you picked up a new ticket for no license. So, and your honor, I would re reiterate what Mr. Griffin just said. If you had a license before, Mr. Johnson, 
they're going to suspend you, uh, revoke you for a year until you complete that year. You're not eligible for a license. So you also have two drinking and driving offenses. So you're going to have to prove to this court that you're entitled to a license and you need to get off on a better foot than what you've got yourself into and demonstrate to this court that you, you're taking sobriety seriously and you're taking yourself seriously. Um, because right now you can't even qualify for another year. Um, maybe we can help you in that regard. Maybe we can't, I don't know exactly what the legal requirements are, but excuse me, judge. Um, but sir, you got to know that this is serious stuff and you can't go out and drive. You can't do it. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I apologize. No, that. you're good. Did you, did you hear all of that, Mr. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. All right. The next time you come back to see me in two weeks, I'll put him on the 22nd, on yes, uh, January 22nd, 2021 at 830. Next time you come back to see me, Mr. Johnson, you need to be in your meetings and you need to keep a journal. Write down the dates that you attend the meetings, whether it's virtual, and tell me what you learned in those meetings. I also need you to be in treatment. The next time, by the next time you come and see me, you need to be actively in treatment. And you also need to be in compliance with your testing. If not, you're gonna have some real problems, okay? That's wrong. And Your Honor, All might, right. I, might, I, might I ask, uh, sir, was that the ticket you picked up, was that in, in uh, Detroit? Yes, sir. Okay, I just want to. We'll we'll keep we'll keep our eye on that one. Okay, thank you. Thank All right. All right. If nothing else, I'll see you in two weeks. Be on track, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. One last matter. Why Miss Hammers joined us so late? I'm not sure, Your Honor, uh, but I think she's been on at least the last hour. Um, yeah, but she came on late. I wrote down her time. I, I don't see her on here anymore. No, I, I don't see her. I don't know where. She Did somebody find out what happened to Christy Zacker? Okay, so Miss Zacker's date, Miss Drew, is Miss Drew aware of that? Yeah, I'm letting her know that. All right. Oh, okay. All right, so Ms. Zachary is accounted for. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Reed, I've already done the KBS. And so the last thing on my docket, come on, Katrina Hammonds, where is she? That, that's Mr. Reed's client judge. I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Vikings is doing the Mr. Reed today. Have you all switched personalities? <laughs> it's a new year. It's the new year, Judge. It's the new year. No, Mr. Fikers. I can't do two Mr. Reeds, though. <laughs> you can only I'm have quiet. one Mr. I'm Reed quiet. in your life. I'm trying well, to be I know, good. and it's scary. I agree it's with scary. That. I agree with that. <laughs> no, I, have, I already have one Mr. Reed in my life. I don't have another one. <laughs> only one. I'm trying only to be good. one. <laughs> All right. I, Mr. Nancy, you heard anything from Ms. Hammonds? I just tried to call her. I don't know um, if she started having technical difficulties. I, was I did talk to her this week. That's why uh, she knew to come on. I've talked to her counselors and all that good stuff. I don't know. Um, Can we adjourn until tomorrow, Jared? Yep, I'll adjourn until tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell her, don't come on my docket late, though. I will, Your Honor. I apologize. Well, let's see. Is that her? That's her. Okay. There we go. Yep. There she is. All right, Miss Miss Hammonds. We we're waiting on you. Oh my God! I'm so sorry. The phone died. <laughs> oh, okay. You joined us so late, though. You've got to get off the of court on time, okay? Well, I was in, but I kept going in and out. The phone, I got it fixed and my screen sensitive. So it's like anytime it touched it, it was going off. Okay. But you did join us late. I wrote down the time you came in. You didn't come in on time. So make sure you come in on time, okay? Okay. I do All right. State, state your full name for the record. 
Karina Hammonds. All right, Ms. Hammonds, you're in our virtual courtroom. Do you agree to have your hearing by way of Zoom? Yes, I do. Wonderful. I have the following cases, 1456520111, case number 16245-6451, Case number 1739-09131 and case number 1804-595-601. Happy New Year to you, Ms. Hammonds. Same to you as well. All right. How did you do for the New Year? Uh, not really new good year for me, I guess. Um, I did pretty good overall with my sobriety and everything. It's just uh, my thoughts have it lately i um i'm sorry say that again i couldn't hear you my thoughts have been distorted lately they have been yeah. do you know what's causing that um yeah i um ended up losing my dad on his birthday which was november 21st and i haven't been it good um I'm sorry to hear. Did you say you lost your dad? You're fading in and out. I'm not certain what you're doing with your phone, but you're fading in and out. And oh, so no. did you say that you lost your dad? Yeah, I ended up losing my father on his birthday in November. Um, he was struggling, as I was telling you guys before. He wasn't doing good. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, Miss Hammonds. I am. I know you were working with them and helping to take care of him. What are you doing to take care of you to deal with that grief? Um, just staying if um, I'm accountable for my kids and, you know, everything that's going on and, you know, trying to remain that positive outlook in their life because I honestly don't know what to do right now. Um, just to like maintain my sobriety, stay out of trouble. Um, and take one day at a time because you never know, you know, that tomorrow's promise. So, Are you still in your outpatient treatment at Eastwood Clinic? I am, yes. All right. Have you been talking with them about your feelings and your thoughts since your father's passed? Yeah, um, I have. Um, I work with my counselor. Um, I just tend to always doesn't mind. Um, so Ms. Hammonds, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Is the phone cutting out? Yeah, but it's like you're moving it or something and your voice keeps dipping down. No, um, I was saying that I was having a hard time, you know, dealing with everything that was going on. But overall, I was doing good with sobriety. Um, it's just hard to deal with it right now, I guess, for me. I've never experienced a loss that close to me. And I didn't see it coming either. So um, just trying to stay positive with everything has like, been keeping me going. Okay. All right. What can we do to help Ms. Hammonds? Um, don't scare me like you guys did last month. <laughs> How can uh, we scare you? Because I was looking for a court date. And then when I was calling Mr. Yancey, I couldn't get a hold to him. So I was like kind of freaking out about the court day, like, oh my God. But then I called, I got a hold of his voicemail and it said that everything will be pushed till January. So I felt a little bit better about it. I don't like it. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. I want to encourage you in your outpatient treatment to talk about your feelings, about your, the loss of your dad, um, because that's, that's a huge blow. And so... You want to be able to have some tools to help you work through your feelings and your thoughts, okay? And so I want to encourage you to do that in your outpatient treatment. If you need something additional, then by all means, I want you to let Mr. Yancey know um, because there was a service that hopefully Mr. Morgan reached out. Um, okay, for, for grief counseling. And so at no cost to you. And so we certainly want you to be able to have a better thought process. But first, I want to I do want to applaud you for even realizing and acknowledging that, you know, my thoughts have been a little distorted. I took a big loss and it's been difficult for me. And so whatever we can do to help you, don't hesitate to pick up the phone. Call Mr. Yancey. Come into the courtroom. Call your therapist. Go to a meeting. There are a number of things that you can do 
to help you work through it, okay? Okay, I understand. All right, very good, very good. Mr. Yancey, what would you like me to know about Ms. Hammonds in addition to what we've talked about? Um, just that she's, you know, I know she's had the loss, she's hanging in there. Um, as far as my conversation with her um, therapist, it's the perfect time to work on grief counseling because she's basically completed the other aspects of her substance abuse therapy. So she really completed, but we have her in aftercare as far as her continuing. So this will be the perfect time that she can do grief counseling with her. And I know Ms. Hammond told me she reaches out to her um, quite often. Other than that, she's in, um, she's comply with all the conditions except she has a balance and finds a cost. All right. Um, I know that she's in phase two and I had indicated that she needed to get some counseling with respect to domestic violence. That was done with Ms. Hughes. Has she completed that? She has, Your Honor. All right, very good. And then also uh, working on her GED. I, I know with everything right now, I'm good with holding off, but that's certainly something I'd like to see her do before she leaves us. And then what about the living situation? I had an indication that you needed to find a place for you and your five children. How's that going? Um, with my father passing away, um, you know, it was him and my mother living together. So I'm still residing at the house with my mom and the kids. And um, I kind of think that's where I'm going to reside for the moment. Well, not kind of. I know I'm going to reside there with my mom for the moment because, you know, um, she was helped taking care of my dad, too. And everything's hard on her and with the bills and everything. I'd hate to just leave her out in the open right now. So um, okay. what my Okay, very good, very good. What about work? Are you still with True Tech System, Residents? Um, yes and no. I am not currently working there, but I can go back as soon as I'm able to go back. Um, I was just figuring out things with, you know, of course, my dad was sick. The kids were out of school due to COVID with those Zoom meetings and everything. So um, I was waiting for the kids to possibly go back to school because it's hard to juggle the kids with the you know, the house, the, the schooling, and then trying to work. I would have to work midnights um, in order to actually be able to function the whole house. So um, I'm working on getting somebody there to watch the kids because, you know, that's who was providing care for my kids was my dad until he got as sick as he was. So um, basically now I probably won't start working until I get everything um, in line with the kids for schooling and uh, um dependable babysitter, if not daycare, because I'm scared to put them in daycare right now with COVID and everything going on. Understood. Definitely understood. All right. Um, anything, Mr. Reed, Mr. Mr. Fikens? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Um, Ms. Hamilton, I'm sorry for your loss of your father. Um, you, you seem to be a strong person. Uh, you, you're doing a good job with drug treatment court. Keep up the good work. Um, be safe. Uh, stay positive. Uh, things will get better. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Hammonds. Thank you. And Your Honor, if I might add, Ms. Hammonds, you are stronger than you think you are. I know that. It's hard to lose a parent. Uh, having gone through that a couple times, and, and a lot of us older people have gone through that a lot, um, we only give you our deepest condolences, our best thoughts, but you are stronger than you are than you think you are, and keep up the great work, ma'am. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Yes, yes, you are. All right, Mr. Yancey, Ms. Hemmings is in phase two, and so I have her returning for a face to face, and that would be on January 28th, 2021. I'll schedule it for 8:30 a.m., and you all can work out the logistics. Thank you, Judge. You're muted, Mr. Yancey. You're still muted. Okay, sorry. Ms. Hammonds, um, when you call me, when, leave, leave your message and leave your phone number because sometimes your phone numbers change. So every time you call me, leave a phone number. Okay, I will. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very good. 
All right, Miss Hammonds, hang in there. Good to see you. All right, good to see you as well. Happy New Year to All everyone. Right. Thank you. Same to you. Take care. Yeah. All right. All right, team. We are we have wrapped up the morning docket. I think everybody is.